In a small resort town in the Sierra Nevadas, black bears and humans live together in a four square mile area. Ma'am, move away. And there's only one man to keep a dangerous situation from turning deadly. Get out of there, get out. Shame on you. This is the story of Steve Searles. It's his job to keep people safe from bears. Stop it. And bears safe from people. Leave that bear alone, folks. So when someone here calls 911 about a bear, 911 calls Steve Searles. Ooh. Ooh. The Bear Whisperer. All right. All right. What a. <laughs> example of, that, of a bear, just huge claws, huge Popeye arms, and that huge head. And now here we are in the middle of town. Mm. It's great quiet time and thoughtful time when you're with, that close with a bear. It's 7 AM in Mammoth Lakes, California. While most people are just rising from bed, Steve Searles is taking inventory of dozens of black bears who make this their home. A bear in our community is seen as a, a quality of life. When we see a bear go through our front yard, it makes the day better. And this Eastern Sierra location is ideally situated for a large bear population. We have a, just a huge amount of habitat in our community, uh, lots of green belts and parkways. And uh, of course, the community being so small, uh, we're surrounded by thousands of square miles of habitat. Mammoth Lakes is a resort town, a getaway for millions every year. And bears are the most celebrated residents. Both locals and tourists adore them. Wow, you don't see this every day. A bear was eating off of a bush, and uh, so we got to get up really close to it. Up here on the lake, we've actually experienced the bears coming down in the water and bathing and just kind of splashing around. It's just it's spectacular. I never got this close to a bear. What people forget is that these creatures can be dangerous. Adult males can be seven feet tall, weigh up to 800 pounds, run 35 miles per hour, and kill someone with a single swipe of their razor sharp claws. It's going out. It's coming. Could a black bear be dangerous? Absolutely. By his own will, he could strike out and hurt someone. Or it could be an accident where you have him confined in an area and he knocks you over trying to get away. But for more than a decade, not a single person has been hurt by a bear in Mammoth Lakes. Steve Searles plans to keep it that way. He's a self-taught black bear expert the town has come to rely on to keep bears and people safe. Good morning. Good morning. He's out of trouble last night. I hear you talking. Oh, wow. Chopping, uh, blowing. These are all just uh, him asking me, gosh, can you leave me alone? I want to get some sleep. It's kind of like I act in the morning, too. I know, I know. Every spring, the bears come out of hibernation. Before long, they become eating machines. In just six months, they have to put on as much as 200 pounds to survive the next winter. The easiest way to do that is to forage in town. Black bears are real smart. Uh, they learn real early how to get food, and not wild food, to get into a building, get into a vehicle, trash can, or a bird feeder. They realize it's effective, and they stick with it. Nothing could be worse, because once the bear learns those bad habits, and they spend more time around people, there's a greater probability that something might happen where a bear could hurt a person. In most other towns, bears that get too close to humans are routinely destroyed. But in Mammoth, where the animals are so highly prized, it's Steve's job to keep bears and people apart. 
and he's come up with some pretty unconventional ways for doing that. As much as I care and love for the bears, I'm professionally mean to them. Get out of there. I will haze or harass them. Let's go. Come on. But it reinstills their natural fear of humans. I know, just back up and we'll be all good. Of the psychological play that I have on bears and the ability to uh, outwit them, to uh, con them, to scare them, dominate them, if you will. The bears in our community think that I'm the biggest, baddest bear of all. Shut up. No one's sure what the bears think, but clearly what Steve's doing is working. Hold right there. All right, you guys, across the bridge, let's go. Since he started his unique brand of wildlife management in Mammoth 12 years ago, he hasn't had to shoot a single bear. If you're going to shoot a bear for black bear management uh, within a community, um, that's about the worst uh, failure you could have. Give them some little bit of room to come through. You're going to have another bear come right into that same spot, and you're going to have to start the lessons over again. Uh, we like to keep our bears alive and learning. And uh, every year that goes by, the older they get, the more they learn. Uh, the easier they are to work with. What a good boy. There we go. Hello. Steve averages 20 calls a week from police and residents. Hi, Josh. The calls range from people afraid of the bears. All right, I understand. To people afraid for the bears. He's been there all since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah. One of Steve's first calls this spring is about a young male who's spotted too close to a busy street. What are you doing here? You are way too close to town. What are you doing? No, 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 no. None of that. Bluff charging is just the same as our communication. We just misinterpret what we're hearing. And the bear's saying, you know, if you could just give me some space, I'd really appreciate it. You're making me feel anxious. You're OK. You're OK. All right. All right. When Steve doesn't know a bear, he videotapes it to add to his catalog. That's how he keeps track of the bears in town each season. Just a beautiful young bear, 18, 19 months old. He's black as an ace of spades uh, with that white uh, patch on his chest. Uh, he's just so attractive. And so um, just get my bears names that I can associate with day or night. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give him the name Ace. You can see that this bear is, is too young to be away from its mother. It's small. Uh, very small, uh, doesn't know the ways of the world. You are way too close to cars and people. You can see the cars in the background going by. He's wedged in uh, a busy traffic area. Just doesn't have the common sense yet to uh, stay out of predicaments like this. You need to keep an eye on him and babysit him a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is not good. Go back. Son of a... You bad bear! Go on! You almost got hit by a car. Go on now. Go on. Gosh, I've picked up too many dead bears on that road over the years, and don't want to pick up this one. Get! Get up there! What do the bears learn from me? Uh, they learn boundaries, just like with children, dogs, anything else you're teaching. They need to uh, understand their boundaries. Enough of that. They're not in their comfort zone when they don't have those boundaries. No more, you almost got hit by a car. You scared me to death. You hunker down and stay there. I guess this is going to be a long summer. It's going to take some work to keep him on the right track. More than three dozen bears live in the Mammoth area. During the feeding season, they hide out in a variety of different places. 
They can be found in trees, inside drainage culverts, and under porches of empty cabins. As Steve takes his daily inventory, he not only checks out which bears are in town, but he also monitors their condition. He finds a familiar one he calls Ugly Bear, hiding in a drainage culvert beneath a golf course. I was worried about you. How come you didn't come out last night? Are you hurt? He's a male. We call him Ugly Bear. Big, big adult bear. I'm about seven feet from him. Oh. All right, I understand. Dude, I've got to check you out. If you're not in good health, that's bad. It's not like you to not be out. Did you eat something bad? Have you been shot? What's up with you? Your face is just tough to look at, but... Oh. Oh, dear. Come on, let's stand up. Can you stand up for me? I'll see you. I don't see any blood or anything. You still look sick, dude. All right, all right. Can you walk? Can you walk? I'm gonna leave you alone right now, but I'm gonna check on you later, okay? I can see that. Now I feel bad for calling him ugly, uh, but uh, looks like uh, something's wrong with him. I don't know what, I don't see any blood. I don't know what's going on with the bear. He might got tapped by a bumper, uh, could have gotten into bad food. I don't want to push him too hard. I'm going to give him the rest of the afternoon and just sleep. It's uh, part of working with bears. <laughs> Sticker. Here you go. Thank you for saying thank you. Steve's work with bears has made him somewhat of a local celebrity. We know he takes very good care of the, the bears, and it's been amazing to talk to him because he seems to know each and every bear, uh, which is very unusual. Was he bigger than me or littler than me? Littler. Littler, okay. He actually knows how many bears are in town, where they live, what their habits are and it's a fantastic asset to this town. Steve really cares a lot about the bears and knows what he's doing. Uh, all my friends, everybody I know is really in favor of what he's doing and thinks he does a great job. Any other distinguishing marks? He's pretty famous in the summertime. A lot of people know him. He's always around, uh, really involved with the town. He's a good guy. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Despite his reputation as the bear guardian, Steve didn't set out to protect them. I used to uh, live in Southern California, moved up here 31 years ago, didn't know where it was, uh, was looking for a better lifestyle and bought a map, started driving and uh, moved to Mammoth and just never left. He worked as a carpenter and took up hunting as a sport. It soon became his full-time job. He hunted everything from ducks and geese to deer, antelope and, yes, even bears. I hunted all the different species, and um, being uh, really uh, known as a killing machine here in Mammoth, and probably one of the most successful hunters in the county. Eventually, uh, we had a huge population of bears here in Mammoth, and uh, the police department came to me knowing uh, my skills as a, a hunter, and they actually hired me to uh, take the life of the bears went out and studied the bears and made a rap sheet, a, a mug book of uh, front and side profile of each one of the bears, and then uh, figured out you know, who was who, who was mating with who, son of who, all that. During those studies to see which bears I was gonna shoot first, I was out uh, at a local dump site and out there in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning by myself, and the, um, all of a sudden the bears all looked into the dark and they um, just moved out. And I was like, gosh, well, what's uh, bugging them? and uh, in walked Big, a famous bear named Big. And uh, he strolled in and all the other bears stayed away while that bear fed. And then when he walked off, the other bears came back in, the lessers. I was just like, wow, this is incredible. If I could command the type of respect that he commands, I could become the biggest bear in town uh, artificially, then um, I, I, I could work with the bears and not have to kill them. 
I wish I could tell you that I had some huge epiphany in my life uh, to help the bears. No, nope, I'm just somebody that wanted to accomplish the task at hand. Uh, if we couldn't resolve it, we did need to remove and destroy the bears. I thought, gosh, how could I unionize the bears? How could I just sit them all down in a circle, talk to them and let them know how bad people can be around them? Steve's mission turned from killer to keeper. Go on now, get! Go on, get out of here! Shame on you, move off. I could work them out of a, a situation with my voice or body posturing, clapping my hands. Go on. You know better than this. Stomping my feet. Go on now, get. Move on. But if the body posturing doesn't work, Steve resorts to his special control and aversive tactics kit, or what he calls SCAT. Although this looks like a bunch of ammunition, what it is is all non-lethal or less than lethal ammunition. It scares the wits out of the bear, and they should be run from it. I call this the lipstick round, and it um, blows off like a, a big-sized firecracker at the end of its flight. Here's some rubber buckshot we can see right in there. That it's about like a bunch of pencil erasers. You can tap that bear and let him know uh, that, that he needs to move on. If something does go wrong or we need something uh, uh, in a certain situation, we also have lethal in here. But uh, none of these bears have uh, been hurt this year or any other year. Um, I, I wouldn't tolerate it. Go on, get out of here. Um, we, we, we go to great lengths uh, to make sure that a bear is never hurt uh, uh, when we work with the bear. That's not going to help him learn. Dead bears don't learn a thing. Contrary to what people think, black bears are not ferocious man-eaters. People learn about bears or see them on TV, they kind of lump them all into one group. The grizzly, the polar, the brown, and it, it's far from the case. The black is just the uh, pacifist of the bears. But that doesn't mean they don't pose a serious threat, even for someone as familiar with bears as Steve. He never lets his guard down. And if a bear does show signs that he may charge or attack, Steve always has a plan for a quick escape. In every shot, you see the white tennies. Uh, who works with bears, cougars, coyotes, and, and uh, wears white tennies? Um, I feel kind of self-conscious about it. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'd rather be uh, fast-footed uh, than, uh, you know, have, have anything else. And so I just like to have quick feet, but um, it looks awful dopey having the bear guy wear uh, white tennis shoes. By early summer, the bears are in a virtual feeding frenzy. The larger ones have laid claim to the center of town, where they have the easiest access to food but that can often put them dangerously close to people. 101, Wildlife One, I'm en route to a citizen's complaint on a bear sleeping at an uh, apartment complex. And if you have an officer that could uh, help me out there, I'd appreciate it. Cover. It's an apartment complex with a lot of families and children there. I have a much higher response and maybe a much higher level of seriousness when children are involved. Uh, yeah, you'd be a fool not to. He's in the tube right now underneath us. We have a bear living in the pipe. It's been living in there for a couple weeks now, and the kids check the covert every time they come home from school, and if there's a bear in there, they'll go and get their friends, and they'll all come and bang on the pipe and yell inside the tube and try to hear the bear growl or ag aggravate the bear in any way that they can. It's fun to them. If you leave the bear alone, he's not really going to bother you, <laughs> but when it's aggravated on a daily basis, uh, it can be scary. It can get dangerous. Um, we, I'll just see if the air is drafting the right way with a cigarette. And uh, if it is, we'll go ahead and aerosol him out. I want to put him into the forest and uh, teach him that this is a terrible place to den. Steve's going to uh, deploy his, uh, his less lethal rounds, but we usually, we're deploying out with him, we'll deploy with some lethal slug rounds just in case the bear charges anybody. Let's put the bear down if we have to. For Steve, every call is a race against time. If he can't get the bear safely away, the police will be forced to shoot it. We're just going to uh, 
try to spray this bear out into the open. Like Steve Sarrell sprays the pepper spray into the culvert. He usually figures right. whatever the downwind direction is and sprays it in there. And it usually that gets the bear to come out. Yeah, we might get a little draw. <laughs> You'll be able to hear his feet on the metal bottom, clink, 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 clink. Oh, what is he doing? All right, I'm going to go ahead and deploy a um, flashbang device. He obviously doesn't want to come out. We'll go ahead and grab another tool. Uh, this one is like a little cherry bomb. Non-lethal. We'll push him out of this tube. Oh, hey, go check it out. There he is. I got him out right away. Let's go do the follow-up right now. It's a uh, mental game. Wow, his voice is touching me from a distance. They don't know what a, a rubber slug is or rubber buckshot. Um, they have no idea. They sting you, you know, make your eyes water, but uh, they're developed not to split the skin or cause injury. Appreciate your support. Thank you, sir. Been working the territory here? Yeah. I've been here, what, 12 years now. Um, and Steve, you know, got into this stuff years ago and kind of educated the community and the police departments. Pretty much his program we've adopted it and he's now working under the umbrella for the town so seems to be doing well not every day you get to see all kinds of stuff going on around your house like this you know all right i mean we got cops shooting 10 feet outside of our door it's pretty crazy no alegamente a las osos gracias all right <laughs> bye 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 dollars for donuts the bear won't be there tomorrow that's for sure it's a great call. Nobody got hurt or injured. Uh, the bear's going to have a lot better day. The police officers are feeling good. I'm feeling good. Uh, that's the way you want every call to turn out. In Mammoth, spectacular scenes are everywhere. Can't wait till you see this cub. One of the most heartwarming sights is mother bears, known as sows, with their cubs. It's a beautiful little cub. <laughs> Tearing that log apart looking for bugs. This is how they uh, teach the little ones how to get the natural foods, how to get the beetles, the larvae out of the fallen log there. So that's a good thing for that young bear to learn. What did you find there? What a good bear. She's a real young sow, uh, smaller, probably 175 pounds. A little active today. She must have gotten uh, pushed out of wherever she's been denning. A lot of folks in town sometimes they get scared and then it takes them a couple hours to find a suitable habitat and get settled back down. good so far and this is what I stand for this is what I fight for uh, what we just witnessed uh, that's what our community believes in we're gonna leave them alone and let them bed down in the cool of the day they just had a swim and so uh, that'll be enough for today and we saw what we needed to see good healthy bears doing the right thing By next summer, the cub should be able to take care of itself. But if it hasn't been taught how to be a bear by its mother, it may turn to people. A bear cub may imprint on people if it's a young enough bear. In those circumstances, then the bear may act more like a pet dog than a wild bear. It's a very dangerous situation, and it's also very unfortunate because you've taken the wild out of the bear. A bear cub that loses its fear of people can accidentally hurt people. 
en route to 64 Holiday Way on a report of a bear in a house. Hello. Steve gets a call about a bear breaking yeah. into a house where a young woman is hey, home man, alone. Where are you? All right, I'm on my way. We just been dispatched on a call to uh, right up the street here. It's going to be a bear in a house, I believe, with people. The description we have it was all black, 120, 30 pounds, uh, with a white uh, blaze on the throat and neck. He's the only bear that matches that description in the town. And I'm just hoping to God that I can catch his hand in the cookie jar and educate him. Hey. Ariel's in there somewhere. I got to find out which room she's in. All right. I just arrived on scene. It's still in there. You want to know, can you go in? Sure. We can just go in together. Is your daughter in the house? Yeah. Ariel! Wait, well, you're in the back room? Kitchen's that way. Stay right there with your daughter, if you would. Ariel? 101, Wildlife One, I'm in the house, and uh, we're clearing the house right now. You have point of entry right here. 10-4, we're on the back deck, and uh, the kitchen's clear, but let's go ahead and check the whole house first. Claire, your house is clear. Could you tell me what you saw? I heard, like, a clanking in the kitchen, so I was hoping that it was my dad, but it was 3 o'clock, so I kind of figured it wasn't him. So I came out through here. And then I came out through this door. I was scared, so I just kind of, I said my dad's name. I said, Dad, and looked around the corner. And just, I saw the bear pop its head out just right the corner of the kitchen there. You were right here. So and, and I only came this far because I was afraid to go in there. The bear was looking at you from right here? Yeah. And I was scared, so I ran back in there, and I shut the door, and it slammed. And so I'm assuming the bear got scared and then ran out. Can we take a look where the bear made access into the house? Yeah, sure. The, um, I knew as soon as I saw this, it was a pretty small bear that made access to the house. That window was right next to the kitchen. There's food there. And uh, Ace, uh, being a smart little fella, figured out he can punch that screen out and squeeze through that small window and go inside. When the girl saw him and he saw the girl, they both became very frightened, and they both ran in opposite directions. A young bear is still a potentially dangerous bear, especially one bold enough to enter a house in daylight. Ace has caught the attention of the police, and if Steve can't keep him away from people, he'll be shot. The house is cleared, uh, but we're going to patrol the area right now and see if we can uh, find this bear. Did you see a bear? Uh, no, I saw him on the other street. Uh, I saw him um, minutes ago by Gomez. All right, our little buddy Ace is completely blowing it. This goes on. People will call for, you know, the destruction of the bear. Did he go right through here, sir? Yeah, he's around the corner. A black one with a white chest. Which way did he go? You know, I don't know. I wasn't here. I my see. Wife was. I had my garage open. I run down the hardware store for a minute, and he got in the garage in the trash. So he was just here a few minutes ago. Yeah. All right, thank you. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I don't know where he went, though. Thank you very much. I would really like to find him right now. Now some time has passed. We certainly can't spank him for uh, what he did a half hour ago. He won't connect it in his mind. And so um, we're going to patrol a little bit more in the area before we call it off. Hello. Oh, there you go. I I'll, I'll follow you in. Steve gets word that Ace has gotten into the same home he was in earlier today. This time, a different family member was in the house. When I got here, I saw I saw a bunch of people out in the 
in the driveway, kind of pointing it way, you know. The bear went that way, the bear went that way. Steve Searles arrived shortly after. Hey, man. Hi. Did he try to come in your house again? Through the same way? Um, a different window. Uh-huh. Yeah, how long ago did he leave? Uh, I called right away as soon as I heard it. Thank you. Steve Searles went ahead and started tracking the bear down. As we got across the street, we saw the bear in between two houses. He's here. You bad bear. You bad bear. Yelling at him hasn't worked, so Steve uses rubber bullets that will startle the bear, not hurt him. It's a psychological game uh, that you're seeing with me and the bear. Everywhere he goes, people are, oh, look at the bear, look at the bear. If everybody said, get the hell out of here, uh, we'd be good to go. But uh, everywhere he goes, people coddle him and uh, treat him nice. He's nice to them, and so on and so forth. And um, busting into a house, you're crossing my line, you know? It's a common occurrence, you know? I mean, the bears live here. The bears were here before we were. You know, we just got to be careful with the way that we treat them because we don't want this kind of thing to happen. They're, they are wild animals. That uh, rubber ball met its mark, and hopefully we'll uh, put a stop to this tonight. Yes, ma'am, we just shot him with a rubber ball and uh, twice. It's non-lethal, it just looks lethal. Is it, a, is it a little one, a baby one? It is just a real young bear. He's Aww. 17 months old, 18 months old, and he's just as dumb as they come. War we'll work with him some more this year, and um, I have high hopes that we can turn him around. Steve's job makes for an unconventional family life. Stop that! He's on call 24 hours a day. You bad bear! But as the feeding season heats up, he's called away more and more. Hello. Hi, Marianne. No, no, go ahead. Being married to Steve is very interesting, uh, fun, never a dull moment. There's another little bear coming this way, a little two or three year old. We met in 1985. I was waiting tables and he would come in for dinner and stuff and we got to be pretty good friends and that was it. My wife is from New Zealand. We've been married for 18 years. I'm just the luckiest guy in the world. I go to all these benefits and stuff. Everybody's coming, yay, Steve, Steve's a great guy. But she does everything for me so that I'll take care of the bears. And so she sees that as her way of uh, helping with the animals. You guys going to leave the bears alone? All right. He's a good person trying to do a good thing. And um, he really has his heart and soul in this. Just really very caring, very, very caring. Normally, he's all excited when he comes through the front door, and he's like a kid in a candy store. He loves what he does and does what he loves. I have a nine-year-old son, Tyler Searles. My son sees bears on our porch and in our front yard, and he just thinks that kids live like this since he was born. I always have bears, and so um, he just thinks that it's part of life and doesn't know any different. My son, um, he was born here and raised here, and uh, being the son of the bear man, it's uh, a big job, huh? Yeah, everybody knows that you, I'm your dad, huh? Yeah. Tyler's very proud of his dad. If he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps, yeah, sure. We need to pack up, Ty. Would you take this for me, buddy? All right. And a flashlight, too? All right, we're on to the next call, my man. I'm not going to stop Steve from doing what he loves. He would turn into a miserable person. Uh-oh. A friend of mine was out for a moonlight ride with a buddy, and I uh, came upon a bear trapped in a dumpster and uh, called my house and asked if we could come up and see if we could help out. Ah. Yeah, I can hear a cub. Cub inside here. And mama and another cub are over here in this area. 
It's the threesome. Yeah. Hey, how cranky is she? I, I stood up. I went over here. She started going. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's she good. gave me a little charge. Uh -huh. I, I gave her some room. Uh -huh. And so we just waiting for you to show up. With these metal sides, it's a perfect bear trap. Uh, the bigger bears, they can pull their way out. But uh, it's a real bad thing for young bears. Hello. Hello. You're OK. You can see that she's a little bit stressed, and she's protecting that one cub, and she's going to stay around till this one gets out. As the minutes pass, the cubs' cries grow more frantic, and the mother more agitated. Just back up a little bit, and let me grab this ladder. A mother bear with cubs has the reputation of being one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Hello, good girl. Where are you? Where are you? Good girl. There you go. There you go. Let's go. That's all right. Go on. Go on. Most black bear attacks come from an anxious sow defending her young. Can you put a light on her, please? Oh, look at you. Look at you. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, you stay back. You stay back. Uh, all right, I see. I see what's going on. This cub's going to come squirting out of here quick. All right. Back off. Back off. Back off. All right, all right. The bear's got the ladder. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. That's how you want to see every call go. Um, I've seen a lot of cubs locked in dumpsters. This scene was just a little bit different uh, with an extra cub. The sow was getting pretty anxious right there towards the end. But um, as I started putting the ladder down in there, uh, the bear started pulling on it to come on out. So he wanted out in the worst way. And uh, through a little help from a friend, um, it all turned out good. have um, one bear that I've been watching for the last three or four days. His name's Ugly Bear, and uh, he has been laid up. He's not taking water or food. He's not urinating or defecating. I don't know if it's something that he ate or maybe been uh, hit by a car or something like that. But um, from this angle, he doesn't look like he's in distress or anything like that. Uh, the sun comes up. They have to take cover. There is a lot of people in this area. We're kind of geographically in the middle of town, so it's a tenuous thing. The um, Yes, sir. Thank you. The, the manager is only worried about the people that walk by here and that they might bother the bear or see him or tease him. What do you feel like doing, Sarge? I think we maybe should try and get him to move or something, although it's pretty unusual for one of these bears to bed down in a spot like this. We don't see it too often. Um, you got a good point. You know what? Let me just test his metal. I'm just going to walk over to him, see if, I, if I can ID him. You want to grab a shotgun lethal just to back here, or you? Uh, sure, good precaution is a good idea on every call. Hey, buddy. What are we doing this morning? What are we doing? Boy, are you got a big head. Are you okay? Are you all right? See that big, long lip? That means he's getting pissed off. It's all right. I like you, ugly bear. I do. Oh, come on. When Ugly Bear refuses to leave peacefully, Steve steps up his efforts. Hey. Hey. You want to walk out of here? Hey. Hey, he's coming on, this come way, Steve. To us? He's coming this way. Coming this way. Hey, you guys. Let's go. Are you sick? We have some people in the area. We'll all go easy now. And uh, I'm going to give them just a little bit of, uh, uh, come on, let's get out. There he goes. Go on now. Go on. Get 
One. Nice. Yeah, he looks like he's walking okay. He looks to be in good health. Uh, we've been watching him for three or four days in bad health. And uh, other than being at the wrong place this morning, looks like he's going to be okay. So we'll monitor him for the rest of the day. Um, crazy. While we were asking a lady to move out of the way, she's reporting a second bear just uh, 100 yards from here. We're going to walk over there and take a look at that. Can you crawl up there? <laughs> How did you know he was up there? He's been there all since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah. They're always up in this tree. They are? Wow, wow look at him. Different. All day yesterday, you knew he was up there. Man, we should cause your like a cat. The, the same down. bear, huh? I think so. All right. He's different. He looks smaller than the one yesterday. He does? He does, yeah. Was he sleeping in the same he, spot? No, he was on the other side. He's right, he's right up here. And then I checked, right like, around okay. dusk, and he was gone. So I think this is a new one. All right. Yeah. You know how they found out that he was up there yesterday? He urinated when somebody uh. walked by. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They're taught all their lives to climb a tree sure. in fear. Well, so he's showing respect to the people. With your guys' permission, we're going to let him sleep up here today. Um, with all this attention, he'll be gone in the morning. <laughs> he's cute. <laughs> By midsummer, Steve has responded to dozens of bear calls. But many of his most troublesome incidents involve young bears. One in particular he's been tracking is a light-colored cub whose mother may have been killed by a hunter. This bear's name is Blondie. It's amazing that he's still alive. He's been on his own for a long time. Uh, real young cub, very small as you can see. Um, what he's eating is bird food. It's the uh, crack cocaine of a bear's life. These homes here are built uh, right on a uh, stream, so it's a natural corridor for the bears. He's living in the woods. He comes up to the backs of these houses and take advantage of the uh, bird food. Comes over here and leaps from here to the tree and goes up and gets on this branch, and he just takes the feeder and drops him to the ground. Then he goes down the tree and starts his little feast. So he, he's amazing. He's been staying out of trouble the last couple of weeks, but he did enter this home last week through an open window. And uh, that's just terrible for a bear to learn those lessons. Um, this bear, as cute and small as he is right now, is going to grow up to be a big, huge bear. And uh, if we don't train him correctly from the start, then uh, we get what we deserve. I don't want to hurt the bear. I want him to survive. And he's really a cute little guy. He has no fear of people because people have no fear of him. He's standing here looking at me while he's eating. If a bear is eating in front of people, and uh, he becomes conditioned to that, which this bear is conditioned to it, technically I'm part of the problem. By the bear observing me, observing him, it could be that I helped condition the bear that uh, people are loving, they're gentle, they're kind. This is um, a struggle I go through every day. It's still a challenge, you know, whether to just lay into him or to uh, lay off. But this time, I think we're going to lay into him. Steve will use pepper spray. The effects only last 10 to 15 minutes, but hopefully the memory will last much longer. What are you doing, bud? This is going to get you in a bad way. What should we do about it? Huh? What should we do about it? It's you and I. What should we do about it? I'm glad you're alive. What are we going to do about this? What's this? What is this? What is this? Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. You're on good, huh? You're on good.
what was that? That stinks, huh? So none of the pepper spray got in his face or in his nose. Uh, the bear is analyzing us, analyzing the decision, the noise that he just heard. Uh, I should have thrown the can at him. Here he comes, thinking about it again. Hi, Blondie. That stuff stinks, huh? Come over here, and I'm going to give you a whole snootful. We can smell the pepper spray. It's still in the air. This thing's been contaminated a little bit, and so that's why the bear moved off. He wants to live. He wants to get on enough weight to make it through the winter. He's obviously not going to make it through the winter at the size that he is. Blondie, just like Ace, just mischief that could lead in the future to the destruction of a bear. If they don't learn the lessons of staying out of houses, you need to curb uh, your behavior, or it could lead to bigger problems. Toward the end of summer, Mammoth Lakes, California is jammed with tourists and black bears. It's just awesome. For the tourists, foraging bears are a form of entertainment. Uh-uh, no closer. But for the bears, late summer triggers a desperate search for food before winter draws near. Friends of mine were up to the lake's base and got to see the uh, salmon cup. It's uh, predictable this time of year. Uh, they can't tolerate being near those big males, and so they bug out and go up to the lakes. At the beginning of the season, this sow was teaching her cub to look for natural foods. But in survival mode, the bear has become bolder. This is a classic example of what you don't want with bears. A young mother uh, with some difficult habits uh, teaching her young. The fishermen, uh, they go off and, and leave their stringers, and uh, she pulls those fish up and uh, feeds them to her cubs. So does it set a, a, a bad example? Absolutely. Determined bear. Oh, yeah, I had one almost two pounder. The bear's got it. Get a good meal. <laughs> I think she's eating it right now. This is what they do. They want their breakfast. They come around lunchtime. They don't bug the people. They just want our fish. For them to get those uh, occasional fish along the shoreline, they're taking out the uh, ones that are dead or dying. And uh, making it part of their diet is not a, a bad thing at all. I think it's appropriate. But stealing stringers, boy, if that goes on every day, it can lead to problems. Hungry bears can be wildly unpredictable. Sometimes they do things that are shocking, even to Steve. Stop that. Go on now. I use a pushpin board to map where my bears are. And uh, just in the last few days, uh, we've had our first frost. We've had a huge wind event. Um, Mother Nature is talking to these bears. The uh, orange pin in the center represents where we are today. That's my house. And uh, the blue pins uh, represent the known bears and where they are here this morning. And uh, where this pushpin map looked a lot different 30 days ago, 60 days ago. It'll indeed look a lot different 30 days from now. We have a, a pretty full habitat. The uh, carrying capacity is uh, probably at its peak or close to it. And uh, the social capacity, how people feel about the bears and a little bit of mischief they get into, um, that's being challenged as well. Is there potential uh, for a problem? Certainly. While out on his regular rounds, Steve tracks a large bear moving through town. A lot of homes around here, a lot of folks, and the bears search those areas out, and I search those areas every day, and uh, we rolled up on them, no harm, no foul, and uh, we'll go take a look. 
the bear heads towards a culvert, then suddenly takes a dangerous detour towards a nearby house. The burglarized in that house. God. He enters through a window, undeterred by the people inside. Can you come out of the house, please? There's a baby in here. I can't. All right. Where's the baby? In bed, asleep. Me. There's a baby right here. A wild bear who feels cornered in a confined space like a house may react out of fear. Get out of here! Get out of here! And the outcome could be deadly. You bad bear, get out of here! Steve drives the bear out the same way it came in. One on one, wildlife one. We just saw a bear uh, live real time uh, break into a unit. Uh, the lady was out here uh, enjoying the day. Uh, asked her for people that are in the house. Uh, there was a small baby. It's still in there. It's safe. The police department will come to back me up right now. I'm still vibrating. <laughs> it's pretty scary. By the time an officer arrives, the bear is long gone. Well, hello. Hello, sweetie. Hi there. How are you? Hello. Thank you, this man. <laughs> you saw the bear, huh? <laughs> Thank God I didn't see him. <laughs> Scared me enough. Yeah. Disaster narrowly averted. But the most reckless bear this season is Ace. He's almost been run over by a car. Broken into the same home twice. And been shot with a rubber bullet after stealing a bird feeder. And Steve has gotten another call that the little bear is at it again. It's trail mix and gummy bears, the attractant this time. They eat such a huge volume of food. That's all they do is eat. The bears are just a stomach with four feet. They'll eat just about anything this time of year. We'll follow the trail backwards and see where it came from. We got three here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A bear wouldn't walk very far with um, such a uh, prime treat. So I'm guessing he got it real close to here. I've seen Ace many times here, three or four times. And he's been in the neighborhood. He's a very cute cub. But uh, he's, you know, I'd say two or three feet high. And a little, little challenging. Yeah, I'm guessing it came right through here and got into this property here. Well, either a cub got in the car or a dog. Has that little black bear been around here again? Yes, ma'am. He was here just a little bit ago. Have you seen him? Well, we've seen him earlier, but not today. Not today? Living in Bear Alley, we get to see the bears quite often. They come right through from the mountains on the other side of our subdivision, and they come right through between our houses. He just got a 12-pack of trail mix and gummy bears. We're used to them. We understand we they're to be observed. We don't try to go near them. I mean, we definitely know that they're, this is not Disneyland where we live. This is a real place. We need to put a stop to it. Oh, yeah. He's going to get hurt or killed. Yeah. And um, just give me a call, even if he's not doing anything wrong, and I'll come over and professionally be mean to him and reinstill his natural fear of humans. This has gone on for, you know, a month now. Yeah. And uh, we need to put a stop to it. Oh, yeah. It's sad. It really is. Um, bears, I guess, just do what comes naturally to them. And if they can find food, they find it whenever they, wherever it needs to be. And if it's in a car, uh, that's where they go get it. And, but unfortunately, that's not acceptable to the people who might own the car. Ace is already too comfortable around people, so much so that city officials like Councilman Skip Harvey are concerned about what will happen when he gets big. Ace is actually in a position right now where if he continues his behavior as he has in the past, we're going to have to make a decision on whether or not he can be coaxed to go back into the wild and live like a bear should, or whether he may have to get an order to take him out. With mounting pressure on Steve to get Ace under control, he follows the gummy bear trail, hoping to find him. 
There he is. I just want to uh, catch him and uh, kick his ass again and see if we can uh, improve improve his uh, attitude around people. Let's go up there. I'm tired of playing cat and mouse with this little bear. Next time I catch him, I'm going to light him up. We love our bears, but when they become criminals and start breaking into houses and put human life in jeopardy, then we have to take that into consideration and take the proper action to resolve it. Ace isn't the only young bear getting into trouble. Blondie's at it again, too. Okay, thank you, and we'll be in route. He's back stealing food from the same house where Steve caught him just a few weeks ago. And I don't know how he got up. Yes, ma'am. Is he up there now? He's laying on the deck. He's right here. We need to teach that bear a lesson. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. You bad bear. No more. Go on, go home. Go home. Get out of here. You bad bear. don't like to spray bears like that, you can see that it painted the bear red. Uh, not, not only that, but um, the sound of the <laughs> is super unnatural. Pepper spray is affecting his ability to smell, to see, and taste. I couldn't take him to a closer point of doom and disaster and potential death in his mind. All of the things that he relies on for life have been shut down right now. And that's part of my job, is uh, cruel to be kind, to educate that bear that this has got to stop. Uh, that's why I sprayed him point blank in the face. I think that uh, the very best thing uh, is what we did. Uh, teach that bear a lesson. Stay away from people. They will entrap you. They will run you over with cars. Uh, they will uh, uh, be kind and cutesy with you and then call the police or call the Department of Fish and Game. So uh, I'm always reluctant to use that much pepper spray on a bear. I know how bad it, you know, it hurts them for 12, 15 minutes. But um, I think that in hindsight and, and looking at all the information that we have, it was the very best thing I could have done. We'll take a look at the, the uh, steps that these people have taken to alleviate the uh, problem. The uh, tree here that makes access uh, to the second story deck has been wrapped with um, sheet metal to um, stop the bear from climbing the tree that makes access. Uh, the second thing that happened is the bears were using the um, these uh, rods that, that are structural to the deck, they were using it as a ladder system to get up on the deck. The homeowners have gone to even greater length and yesterday installed uh, wraps, uh, metal aluminum wraps on all these posts so that the bear can't get traction on the posts. Uh, these folks spent, you know, a lot of money uh, to make their deck bear proof and yet they had the bear on their deck for a second time. You can see his paw prints right there. Uh, he pu pulled himself up. That's easy to do with his body weight. And um, got up here like this. Then he um, pow did a power move. He grabbed right here. His back foot, that's a back foot print right here. He put his foot right here, his other hand right here, put his other hand up here, pulled himself up like I'm doing. I'm not as quite as uh, agile as a black bear. We can see his hand prints right here. Uh, then he did a one hand muscle right here, pulled himself up and gained access to the deck. Here's Blondie's hair.
always kind of hurts my feelings. It's, uh, mm, it's a double-edged sword. You know, loving bears is to uh, reprimand them. And to reprimand a beautiful little bear like that uh, it doesn't bring me any pleasure. It's not a fun thing. But uh, certainly proved the point. And I bet my bottom dollar, uh, the bear won't be back anytime soon. Um, we taught uh, the young bear a lesson, Blondie, that, uh, that you won't soon forget. Got a fire over here in Sherwin Lake. The aircrafts are coming in on it. The worst thing that we could have happen in our community right now is a forest fire. After a long, hot summer, the Sierras are a powder keg of dry vegetation. Forest fires are frequent and frightening. Probably the two number one things that uh, Mammoth cares uh, most about is the wildlife and uh, fire. Today we have uh, both. We have a couple hundred acres burning just a mile east of town of prime uh, wildlife habitat and bear habitat. We can hear the planes overhead, and uh, they're taking an all-out aerial assault on it today, and hopefully it's going to get this thing under control. Forest fires drive wildlife out of the wilderness and into populated areas. We just got a thing on my voicemail that a bear was hit this morning on Highway 203. It's deceased, and uh, we'll go on. Um, the uh, road department has picked it up and put it out, and we're going to go down and uh, see if we can measure it up and identify which bear was uh, hit this morning by a car. It's going to be right down here in the town yard, and we'll try to take it off their hands and uh, treat it with a little bit of respect. It doesn't turn out to be a local bear, but even the death of an unfamiliar one is painful. It's a young bear, male. This bear is two and a half years. Out in traffic and uh, paid with his life this time. And um, There's nothing more we can do for this bear except treat him for it with some respect and put him out in the forest. And um, we'll go ahead and take uh, possession of the bear at this time. We have a... Uh... <clears throat> at the landfill, uh, we have a pit for dogs and cats. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the wild bears going in there or any wild animals. And so uh, I put them out in the forest and do it my way. And uh, we'll say a prayer, and put this guy out, let him return to return to the soil. The local tribe is the Paiute Shoshone. They are the bear clan, the bear people. They're still alive today. They honor me and my family for the work that we do with the bears in the white people's way. And uh, they teach me about uh, their way. This is uh, sweet sage. Um, this is uh, called a smudge stick. The Paiute people believe that um, that the bear takes our prayers. We pray to the bear, and uh, he's here to help us out. And um, they believe that the bear, uh, we pray to the bear, the bear spirit, and that the bear takes the message up to the top of the mountain uh, to the creator uh, with the smoke and um, to your god, whatever god you pray to. And that the eagle takes the message from the bear and takes it up to the heavens. We might be thankful for another day that we have here, for the water we drink, for the air we breathe, for the food that we have, uh, for the winged ones, the ones that hop, the ones that crawl, uh, the four-legged, the two-legged. A smudge stick, it's to um, clean us up a little bit. 
We'll just smudge him off. Last thing he's seen was a car. And uh, we'll just try to um, make it in a good way and that this bear could go on and, and go back to the earth. We have a beautiful spot for him uh, with his home in the back. And uh, we'll put him up on this little ridge here. And um, the animals will come and, and take them and eat them. And um, we like that a lot better than putting them in our landfill. All right, buddy. Doya, doya, quina. Doya, doya, quina. All right, buddy. We'll see you later. The end of summer marks a new phase in the feeding season. For Steve, it's the craziest time of the year. What in the world? It's what he calls the fall shuffle. Get out of there. Come on, let's go. This is the time when the bears are moving around and changing it up as they make weight for the winter. Go on now. I have bears that are showing up. There wasn't room for them in town. The, the uh, town was full at its capacity. As those big bears made weight and, and moved out of town, then it, it leaves a void or a sink for other bears to come in and, and try to make their fill. Every year, the town braces itself for the onslaught of a whole new crop of hungry bears. I had incidents where people had food on the table, and the bear actually went right through the window. And just because the food was there, they smelled it, they saw it. and that was a major concern. You know, so we tried to educate and say, look, you know, you live in the mountains, beautiful area, but still, if you're cooking and the food or those pies on the table, just like Yogi the bear, they're going to go after it and try to get it. All right, I'll be right there. We had a call. The sow that we've been uh, tracking up at the Lakes Basin and uh, her little cub had come to town, and first thing they did was get into trouble. The baby cub got locked in a car. We rolled out there real quick, and uh, it had been in there for quite a while. Here we go. Come on, you're out of there. Come on, come on. Let's go this way. Do you guys have a, do you have a beeper or something? You're OK. We all right? All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No damage to the car. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. The sow, she wasn't uh, peeling out and getting the hell out of there. I didn't want to leave the area without the cub hooked back up with the sow. Go on. The sow is three, three and a half years old. Go on now, get. It'd be like a teenager having a kid. Go on, get. Ha. If she doesn't have a lot of life's experiences, and she's not teaching her young. Uh, the best habits. Uh, bears need to teach their young where to uh, get that natural food source. Go on now, get! The bear opened the car door, got in, oh. and then closed it and opened it again. Wow. Closed it, and the, bit, the cub just was stuck in here. Wow. Took a bite right here, took a chunk out of this. We tore out this whole thing. And then there's a panel on the back door that we ripped off. Not a good thing. Probably $500 to $1,000 worth of damage to the inside of this young lady's car. It's just that time of year. You got to be ready for these calls and, and for uh, what the knuckleheads might do. But some situations are far more dangerous than others. Hey, Rick. Steve gets word of a break-in at the golf course snack bar. When he arrives, he discovers a bear he's known for years. Hey, one ear, stop get it. Get down there. Get, get back, one ear. Get down. Go on. Go back. Go back. Go back. To personally look in my face and not move away when I approach him, that doesn't stand with me. It was really a scary 
because it was almost like a face-off with the bear and Steve and they were kind of going back and forth and the bear just did not want to leave us alone and not want to leave the snack bar alone because of all the food. No, that one here. Get that. Go back now. To come in for unnatural food in the middle of the day, not uh, remembering what a black bear is supposed to do, move away from people. He knows me, I know him. He need to move away as soon as I approached. Boy, this old bear uh, and me go way back. Jeez, it's got to been nine or 10 years ago uh, when we first met one year and I uh, had some run-ins with them on the elementary school campus with children present. Uh, it was during recess and uh, our school is right next to the open forest. It really crossed my mind that if I was gonna do bear work and be seen responsibly within the bear community, that the proper thing to do was uh, shoot and kill one ear just for being on the campus. He was a huge adult male with his ear bitten off from fighting. And uh, there was about 200 kids present. It would have been uh, horrible to destroy that bear in front of those little eyes. And uh, I just get going with the successes of the program. And um, we used non-lethal on the call. We had a lethal back up there. We had uh, myself and another officer went non-lethal. And we had a final officer close the road so we could put him out in the forest. The bear left that day and didn't return for two years. It's one ear. Where have you been? I haven't seen you in years. It's one ear. That's incredible. It's your first day home, and you're in big ass trouble. Uh, we tuned him up again. No, hey, none of that. None of that. Took about 60 seconds to reinstill his natural fear of humans. Uh, he left. No more. No more. Today, One Ear is showing no sign of leaving. He's backed into a culvert, creating a face-off with Steve. It's just not typical being a bear acting like this. I'm eight or 10 feet from him, and uh, he's just sitting there looking at me. He wants what's behind me. So it's a standoff as long as I'm here. Never seen anything so rude. No more. No more. Yeah, and you guys are going to have to take a drop. Sorry. It was crazy. There were golfers on hole nine that didn't even know that they were actually right on top of the bear, and the bear was in the tunnel right below them. And they were looking for their ball. They had no idea what was going on. This will not stand. And he can't be uh, hanging out here scaring people or intimidating anybody. Wildlife one, Sam one. Well, good. You know what, could you meet with me at the Divot Bar and Grill on the golf course? If you could bring some non-lethal in a 12, that'd be good. I don't know if he's distressed or having a problem competing for food. He's not showing enough fear of humans and we're about to give him plenty of fear of humans. When I got there, uh, one ear was in the culvert. He was been chased to the mouth of the culvert, and he wasn't leaving. He knew the people were scared of him, and he could scare them away to get food. That's probably one of the most dangerous uh, types of situations we can have with these guys, where, where they're were emboldened enough to confront people. He obviously got the one ear from being in a fight. Indeed. I've seen scars all over his face. Does that kind of indicate what his general disposition is in his own community? Not only that, but it might be an indicator. When he comes out of there, you'll see he's small in size for his age, and uh, he might be on the downward swing of life, um, a bear that's uh, being pushed out of his own habitat. He's obviously been in a lot of fights, had a lot of years on this uh, earth. Our primary goal is to make them afraid of people. And in the long run, that was fortuitous because we were able to use, you know, quite a bit of our bear arsenal on one ear and really teach him a lesson. I'm gonna put one right over the top and right on his butt, I think. Hey, get out of here. Go on. Get, get. Go on. The first shots are beanbag rounds. They won't hurt the bear, but hopefully they'll sting him enough to get him on the run. Go on, get. Steve follows up with a loud but harmless flashbang device.
There you go. I was able to get three bean bags on him, and he was able to get some flashbangs in there, which is devastating and loud to the bear when he's inside when those things go off. You can imagine being in a trash can and someone beating it with a baseball bat. That's how Wonder felt. After that, he never returned. He didn't hurt him. No, no, it's just spanks. It's just a bean bag round, and it's just used to, to teach them that people suck, that we can be mean. I want to put the wild back in their eyes. I want to put the wild back in their heart. I want them to be afraid of people and run away when they see them. I rarely get to be with the bears in a no harm, no foul setting. It's always, you know, responding or tracking or doing this or doing that. And I'm tired. I got a bunch of brand new bears, none of the old push button bears that knew the ropes. When I get this tired, sometimes I'll go out and find a bear and just be with them and, um, and just try to re-energize them. Steve finds a familiar old bear under the porch of a vacant cabin. There's no need to drive him out since no people are present. Hello. Hello. I haven't seen this bear in two years. It's half nose. I didn't expect to see him here. This is a real shot in the arm and more than I had hoped for. Hi. This nostril's been bit off by an old bear I used to be friends with. That's a six and a half, seven foot bear in now. All right, all right. Boy, you look good. You look good, pal. I'm proud of you. I can't believe you're still alive, buddy. A big heavy bear like that uh, is a trophy for hunters. And me not having eyes on with them for the last couple, three years, uh, you just have to assume that they either died by natural causes um, or uh, were shot, you know, during the hunting season. Again, he's got to be 12 years old. Hi. Hello. Do you remember me? Can you smell me? You do remember, huh, Half Nose? You do remember, huh? This is the relationship that I have with some bears. I've worked with that bear and probably spent 60 hours of time with him at that close proximity in his life. Did it lead to him coming closer to people or becoming habituated or conditioned to people? Actually, the opposite. He hasn't been in town in years. We used to vocalize like this for hours. And um, what I was saying, I'm not sure what he was saying, I'm not sure, but we used to enjoy a lot of time together. You do remember, huh? All right. He just got home, and we didn't want to push him out on him under his deck in the middle of the day. We'll go ahead and leave him on and check on him a little later, but great day for the bears. People say I love bears. I love my wife, I love my son, I love my community. Do I love bears? I sure love this one. Thank you. We'll see you later. Every time a bear is caught too close to humans, it runs the risk of being destroyed. One of this season's repeat offenders has been the young bear, Ace. After disappearing for almost two months, he's back, bigger, bolder, and living on borrowed time. It appears Ace has gone in through an open sliding glass door, uh, went in the kitchen and helped himself while the homeowner was working in the garage. Uh, the homeowner is a retired officer that I've worked for, worked with for years and years, and um, he ended up throwing a chaise lounge chair at him and running him off. Looks like the police department is going to um, issue a shoot order for this bear. It's a coin toss on which way this could go. Steve's got one more chance to force Ace to leave for good or watch him die. We'll see how the day plays out, but I'm gonna spend the next couple hours just canvassing this area where he's, he's off and at. If we uh, ha have any luck at all, 
we could get a hold of this bear in the next few hours and um, see if we can convince him with non-lethal to leave the area and um, maybe change the outcome of uh, what's about to happen. There's Ace's rear footprint. There's his front footprint. Absolutely the same bear. There's a fresh bear bed right there, and uh, he could be uh, hiding here during the day. We'll keep an eye on it. This area is clear. We're going to work across the street. haven't destroyed a bear in a dozen years for public safety. I'm really concerned. Uh, it is, uh, it'd be a real hard thing for my community. Um, hundreds of people have seen and interacted with this little bear. Uh, that's part of what got him into the jam he's in. And um, it's led to what looks like will be his death. You know, as a chief here in Mammoth Lakes, my primary responsibility is public safety. And when a bear habitually breaks into homes because that's where he's learned to forage for food, uh, that bear becomes a uh, public safety bear. And uh, I'm not willing to compromise a human life to uh, save a bear that uh, habitually breaks into homes and has confrontation with humans. We've identified this bear because it has broken into as many as eight or nine homes. About half of those homes have been occupied. It's crawling through open doors, going through screened windows. And traditionally, once humans have confronted it, it leaves right where it came in at. But the fear is that a human being gets between that bear and his exit point, And that is when we're going to have a major problem with this bear. What are you doing? You bad bear! The rubber bullets sting, but won't penetrate the bear's hide. Let's go find him right now. You know, um, we couldn't catch him with a hand in his cookie jar, but I just don't have the time to wait for that. Uh, we need to move the bear out of the area. So I went ahead and uh, tapped him twice with a rubber bullet. And um, uh, I'm going to continue to uh, pursue this bear and catch up to him. And I'll repeat the process until, uh, until we get the right results. The thing is, when he goes in the forest, we never haze him. We never harass him. That's how we um, applaud him for good behavior. Uh, today, with a shoot order on his life, um, if I catch him just right out in the forest, right behind and close to these homes, I will take extra measures to uh, move him even further through the forest. And so uh, it's not my typical way, but uh, this isn't a typical scene.
like to save his life, really. For more than a week, there's no sign of Ace. You didn't see him today. No, I haven't seen him, and All I'm right. sorry, but I know we had three police officers come through the other night with their guns. Did you see a bear go through here? All right. Then Steve gets word Ace has been spotted. He responds as fast as he can, still hoping to save the little bear's life by driving him out of town for good. I'm not mad at the bear. I'm not mad at myself. I'm not mad at the police. I'm not mad at my community. Um, there's no, it's nobody's at fault. It's still an unpredictable thing and something that just doesn't come with exact answers. This is where we need Knob Hill. There he is, right here on the right. The bear eludes Steve, but not for long. You bad bear. He's directly above us, about 40 feet above my head. Now we are in a controlled situation. He can't run off. I'm going to go ahead and set him up. As soon as the cars are gone, he's going to come down that tree as fast as he went up it. And I'm going to set him up and light his fire right there at the bottom of the tree. So that's my plan. At least he uh, climbed the tree and fleed his natural instinct. That, that was correct. So that, that's a positive thing. And all the time we've spent with this bear, he's never climbed a tree. We are putting the wild back in him, but we'll just see what happens. The stalemate moves from early evening and into nightfall. Finally, Ace climbs down. It's too dark to hit the bear with pepper spray. So Steve prepares a flashbang device. He hopes the powerful blast will be enough to scare the bear off for good. You bad bear. Go on, get. Get out of here. You bad bear. Mono one, wildlife one. Wildlife one. One single non-lethal round fired at Alpine Circle. The bears left the area we're code for. Steve and Ace have had a long and frustrating season. With winter on the horizon and a shoot to kill order still in effect, Steve can only hope that this most recent and loudest confrontation will be their last. It's late fall, and the feeding season is almost over. The bears have put on enough weight to make it through the long winter hibernation. This is the end of the year. We just took this night. It's really cold out here, colder than it looks. And um, all the bears are scattering and going up on, on this cliff right here and on this hill is just packed with bears. That's where their winter over. The first snow of the season is imminent, and the bears start to retreat to their dens. They're almost uh, lethargic from uh, the huge amount of food that they've consumed in such a short time. It's a part of the year that I always look forward to after all the work. I get just to spend hours and hours with them at, at close proximity. Hello. Hello. You are ready for winter. Some of the bears will spend the winter in town. Areas that were off limits during the summer, like under porches and in culverts, will become perfect dens once covered by snow. The bears will be safe from humans who don't even know they're there. They're buried under the snow. There's no light. They don't eat. They don't uh, um, hydrate. They don't defecate or urinate for six months. The bears live off the fat they've put on during their summer feeding frenzy. Their heart rates drop dramatically, but they're not completely asleep. 
they can still respond to danger and mothers can take care of their cubs. As far as sleeping, they just do it out of boredom. And so um, uh, the bears uh, are preen every day uh, in the den, uh, clean their, their privates, uh, re-fluff their nest, if you will, and then spend a big portion of the day sound asleep. But uh, they're just uh, killing time, waiting for the spring to come so they can restart their cycle. Steve won't see the bears for several months, so he takes time to visit their dens to say goodnight. A sleepy time, huh? You look great, dude. I'm sorry for bugging you all the time, but you've taught us a lot this year. Hi, ugly bear. Hi, buddy. Looking a lot better. He was sure sick there for a few days, but uh, he's doing good now. He's not gotten in any, any trouble all summer long. So uh, not the prettiest bear, but I've uh, kind of come to like him. So he's got his winter digs right here, and uh, if it doesn't flood, he'll be all set. All right, ugly bear, have a good winter. <laughs> The last time Steve sees the sow and cub who caused so much trouble earlier in the season, they're headed away from town. That's a good bear. That's a good bear. And it looks like the wild bear one ear is nowhere to be found and has retreated back into the mountains. It just can't be a better example than one ear. It makes me smile because uh, I've gone through this with him, oh, five times over 10 years. Go on, get. Go on, get. Uh, I get close to killing him, and uh, then we use non-lethal and catch him red-handed. Every single time, the same results. And within days, he leaves the area, and uh, to this day, we haven't seen him again. As for Ace, the marauding youngster who faced a death sentence, Steve hasn't seen the little bear for almost a month, and that's good news. Ace, about Three or four weeks ago, I wouldn't give you a nickel for him. It looked pretty grim for him. I thought that he was just incorrigible, but right now he's staying the heck out of trouble. I've looked everywhere to try to find that bear. As a bear worker, a wildlife worker, some answers I'll never know, but I really hope and look forward uh, to seeing him in the spring. After the busiest bear season in Steve's 12 years on the job, winter finally blows in. With the bears in their dens, Steve can finally get a good night's sleep, at least until next spring, when the Mammoth Lakes bear cycle starts up again. Who are the bears to me? They are the opposite of everything that's wrong in, in our society. Um, they lead by example. They're, they're total gentlemen. They're so forgiving. They're so live and let live. They're willing to share that with me, and boy, I just love them for it. In Mammoth Lakes, California, the bears are back in town. Boy, you're huge. They're not only huge, they're hungry. He's eating a ton of grass. With tourists flooding into the area as fast as the bears. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's some bears there. <laughs> Collisions are imminent. It's up to one man to keep bears and people safe from each other. Go, man, go. There's a golfer right there. Steve Searles. One on one. Nobody knows the bears like he does. Okay. Get out of here. This season, a massive bear challenges Steve. Knock it off. Enough of that. Another leaves him shaken to the core. I got blood on my glasses. And for the first time, one wrong move puts Steve in a place he's never been. No! Black bears are some of the most imposing creatures on the planet. They can tear the door off your car and not even break a sweat. A big male can weigh 600 pounds and still outrun the fastest man on Earth. He could sprint probably at 25 to 30 miles per hour. They can scale trees, swim great distances, and sniff out food three miles away. 
Black bears can smell through a cooler that's locked inside of a car that's parked inside of a garage. In Mammoth Lakes, it's easy for bears to find food. There's fish and lush vegetation. It's a wild bear paradise, with one exception. They must share the space with more than a million tourists a year. The potential for conflict is great. It's Steve Searle's job to keep things in check. Get out of here. You bad bear, get. So as far as the job goes, I'm a really lucky guy, and I have a unique job. But it does, it's just, you know, it's the yin and yang of life. And um, I have to be the judge, the jury, and sometimes the executioner. Don't like the third one, and so it's best to do a lot more of the other two. The more proactive I am rather than reactive, uh, the better results we get. So I work a lot of hours, and I'm out here every day. Steve Searles came into the picture as a hunter originally who knew how to track. And when we began to have wildlife issues, the chief of police enlisted Steve's assistance to help control the wildlife. Go on. You know better than this. And as a self-taught professional, he has become very well educated in our local bears' behaviors and how to Come condition on. them and use techniques in controlling their aggression to help them realize that human beings probably are not the best people to be around. All right, you guys, across the bridge, let's go. Steve's official title is Wildlife Patrol Officer, but he's better known as the Bear Whisperer. For probably the last 15 years, I have um, tried to vocalize with bears. I've been too embarrassed to share that. I do it privately, and some bears, uh, when they see me coming, they will start vocalizing. Other bears are a lot quieter. Um, just through trial and error, I just um, try different techniques uh, to make my job easier. Oh, I hear ya. I would describe Steve as a completely unique personality. He's uh, intense at the same time as he can be fairly laid back. All right, you can come over here. He's dedicated his life to hanging out with the bears and getting to know them and trying to understand them. Is a brown bear? It's, it's a black, black bear. So how old do you think that cub is? It is. This year? It was born in February. Over the past 15 years, Steve has developed an unprecedented program to keep people and bears apart. It begins with two rules for the bears. The first, be respectful of people. You go on. Bears that aren't afraid of people, it'll get them killed. And so, um, you know, running bears up is a part of my job. Go on. It'll just make them live longer. Rule number two, don't scare people. Knock it off. We know statistically that people are rarely, if ever, hurt or um, killed by a bear. 100,000 bears have been killed by people. There's just no denying the numbers that the bear's going to end up on the short end of the stick every time. What are you doing? Get out of there. Get out. I have this psychological hand on them. And even though I, I weigh nothing in comparison, they believe I'm the biggest, baddest bear in town. But sometimes the bears are willing to battle Steve for dominance. Enough. Shame on you. A bear's going to huff at me, and he's in trouble with me. I'm going to huff right back. I don't back down. And when necessary, Steve uses a variety of non-lethal techniques to teach the bears right from wrong. Get out of here. Go on, get. Get out of here. Get. I love bears, but um, it's cruel to be kind. They need to learn that people are mean. They'll spray them, they'll run them over with their cars, they'll kill them, they'll shoot them, they'll entrap them. And so I'd rather be mean to them professionally than have them die. Steve is one of the most interesting people I've ever met. He's trained all of our officers on, on his techniques and strategies on dealing with bears. and. We work very well hand in hand with him. Hopefully, he's going to move out of there slowly, and I'm going to back you up with non lethal. But most of the time, Steve works alone. 
Get in there. Go on. You stay in there until it's dark. Go on now. Get in there. Go on in there. Go on. For people that see me working with bears or think that I'm nutty or crazy or it's a dangerous situation, when I'm at your home or your city, that's how I feel too. I'm scared of the cities. Um, my safest place I could be is with the bears. But a bear is still a wild animal, and anything is possible. Wildlife one, looking for me. Go for wildlife one, fifteen. Got to report a bear over on Pine Road. Don't be that. I'm in the area. Uh, the neighbors noticed a, a large bear building a den uh, underneath this driveway, and um, the people that were renting the home uh, called me to uh, come and take a look. Steve films as many bears as he can to identify, study, and better manage them. There's his den for the last five months. Mm. Mm. All right. Mm. Just taking a look. Boy, you're huge. This is the largest bear Steve has ever seen. It's springtime. You can't stand her here anymore. We had a long, successful winter. Sometimes I'm called for inappropriate uh, den sites. If it's too close to children or the school, we need to move the bear along and let him know that it's just not a good place for him. All right. Black bears are solitary animals. If their dens are exposed, they usually abandon them. All right. You're feeling kind of anxious. But this enormous bear is agitated. Mm, you're OK. And even though there's an opening on the opposite side, he doesn't make a move to leave. <laughs> to make sure the bear isn't sick or injured, Steve needs to get a better look. My eyes are limited compared to his, and so uh, I always carry a flashlight to try to uh, light bears up. On camera, I'll catch details that I can't catch in the moment. All right. Seem to offend the bear. All right. All right. The bear's threatening move is known as a bluff charge. Oh, easy. Bear's bluff charging is something that should be respected but try to understand that it's just their way of letting a human being know, can All you right. please back up and give me some space? All right. OK, OK. All right, all right. If you aren't frightened when a bear bluff charges, you're dead or drunk. It's lonely to anybody. I might have a high tolerance for bears. It doesn't mean I'm stupid. Ooh. Ooh. OK. He was uh, mooing and clapping and, and um, huffing. OK, OK. He's uh, saying, I'd really like you to give me some room. I've been under here for five months without anyone bothering me. Now you're in my face. You have that silly flashlight. And um, would you back off and, and let me sleep? I guess I wasn't listening as well as I should. Steve wants to move the bear out and on his way. But it's a delicate situation. I thought he would take the other way out. Go back. Not hurting you. Knock it off. No! No! Stop it! Knock it off! No! Go on! You stop it! You bad bear! Don't see that every day. Oh my gosh. That's a no bear. Holy In the aftermath, you could see that the bear couldn't fit out the other exit of the den. I thought he could. Got to give bears their room. Uh, when he came out, he had me uh, hemmed in in the corner right here. Uh, I hear my uh, vocal commands telling him to no, no, back up, hands above my head, yelling at him. And uh, he responded and moved on down the hill. I learn every day things that I don't know, the bear will teach me. And so um, this was a classic example of me mm. learning. And uh, the bear was giving me the education. Wow. 
When Steve returns the next day, he finds Max back under the house. We brought a police officer over. He shot rounds from up above us. Well, I brought the bear out from the other way, and we plugged him in the ass right here. All right, all right. When it comes to personality or habits, every bear and mammoth is different. Steve makes it his business to know where they are and what they're up to. Part of my job every day is to do like a paper route. And uh, during that paper route, uh, some of those man-made den sites or daybed sites are on my list, and I check them every day. You're OK. I'm just going to take your picture. The daily rounds help Steve keep track of the bears in town. For more than a decade, he's been studying and documenting them. Year after year, many of the same bears return. There he is. That's Ace. Hello. Including Ace, a bear Steve spent lots of time teaching how to get along. This bear was going into homes and uh, became an issue. He's doing great. He hasn't been responsible for a single 911 call all last year and all so far this year. Little Red, who's not so little anymore. Whoa. Ugly Bear, who keeps himself out of trouble. Mm. The old bear half knows. Oh, you look good. You look good, pal. And one of Steve's most stubborn bears. Hello. Mm. Is that you, one of you? The bears are always in the shadows, and as much time as I spend with them, it's still hard to determine one from the other under the darkness or the canopy of the forest, it's sometimes hard for my eyes to adjust and see. Now I can see clearly. What is you? It's one ear. You're looking a little tore up, but not too bad. Steve gives each of the older bears names. Bears are only named for their physical characteristics. I don't name them Bob or Joe or Susie. I name them uh, uh, one ear or half nose or blacky, browny, blondy. Uh, names that I can uh, help remember my uh, bears I'm working with this year. One ear, I've known them for, geez, maybe over 10 years. He knows how to get along with people and how to stay out of trouble. But there was a time when Steve and One Ear were at odds. Hey, One Ear, stop Get it. Get down there. Go back. To personally look in my face and not move away when I approach him, that doesn't stand with me. No, One Ear. Get back. Whoa. Go back now. After countless run-ins, the old bear has finally learned to play by Steve's rules. Do the bears remember who I am? Probably better than I remember them. They have wonderful memories. Black bears are extremely smart. They're known for their ability to communicate, cooperate, and grasp simple concepts. What a nice bear. He continues to just move on out of our way and uh, give us uh, our space where it should be the other way. And this is one of the few bears that's still alive that I started the original program with. You don't get this old by being stupid, and so he's a very intelligent bear. Hello. One of the most important parts of Steve's job is keeping the bears away from crowds, especially during the height of the tourist season. I'm going to come up there and, and uh, bring up an officer in just a little bit. A large cinnamon-colored bear has been spotted inside a culvert, too close to a busy arts festival. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's a bear there. They have concerns about it staying the day here and likely going to ask the bear to leave. Yeah. I'll just be a bear near the art festival, and I might use a unit over here for a few minutes. With so many people all around, Steve calls for backup. The lady who's running the event, she's concerned with the bear sleeping under the road and wants it removed. The uh, exit of the covert is that concrete buttress Where right there. Where does it come out? Over here. Right there uh, on the other side of the street. And the bear is sleeping about 30 feet in. And it is um, that concrete spillway is where the bear is going to predictably come out. 
the least offensive thing I think I could do to the bear to drive him out is touch off two flash bangs. It's just a, a, a very simple device. Um, flare gun is what it basically is for moving on wildlife. It's all uh, just a helpful, non-lethal tool. Just uh, startles the bear, lets him know that he needs to move on. The officer loads his rifle with non-lethal rounds in case the bear runs into the crowd instead of away from it. Steve went to one side of the culvert, and I went to the other side of the culvert and stood up on the roadway so where I can see the bear actually exit. He's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm going to torch off two. They won't touch him. Uh, the percussion is going to drive him out. Go on now. You got to go. Steve shot the flashbang, the bear went through the culvert, out towards the golf course, and I was in position to fire a less lethal round and scare the bear if the bear was to come back towards the roadway. He's right there, bro. Go on now, get in there. Get in there now. Go on, get in there. There he goes. There he goes. So you leave it to the professional. Shut up. <laughs> Oh, Thanks for your help, Dan. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Bear went the right direction, didn't bother the people, knew he had to leave, and uh, we're on to the next call. Mammoth Lakes is tucked into the forest and surrounded by green belts. It gives the black bears plenty of room to den. Here in the forest under the canopy, the bears come to stage or put in bear beds. Um, these are great examples of that. Um, you could see that it's the, a rotted, deteriorated log. And during the heat of the day, um, this material stays cooler than uh, the normal dirt or the duff. I'm about 6'4 barefoot and 180 pounds. And just to give you some kind of uh, scale for the size of the bed, uh, when I walk up on them, you know, they're oftentimes asleep or have their pads up in the air if they want to be cooling. Um, they're crimped over and, you know, more in a huddled fetal position if they want to um, keep body heat. They are diggers by profession. Um, they build them just about the size of their body. We can see two front pad prints where the bear was probably laying on his tummy. Um, it was a little bit uh, rocky for him or had too many pine cones in it, and so he didn't use it for long. But we can see where a bear was trying the bed out, kind of like the fairy tale. You know, there's flowers, water, trees, um, everything you need to uh, be happy as a black bear. But they also like their privacy. They often seek out hidden spaces. Model 1, Wallace 1, 97. <laughs> and sometimes they end up where they shouldn't. That's when Steve has to respond. We're in a really neat part of town. Um, a lot of these homes aren't lived in. At this one, a bear has moved in beneath the hot tub. Hi, big guy. Hello. It's cold out, huh? It's nice and warm under there. He's sleeping out of there today. But there's a problem. The bear's noises have frightened one of the grounds workers. Mm. You're OK. Mm. Hi, pal. Maybe a four-year-old, maybe a little bit older male. He's just kicking it. The first thing Steve wants to do is identify the bear. He has no chest markings, no breastplate. He has no uh, torn ears, no scars. Not that big a bear, but not too small either. Uh, but he hasn't garnered a name, but what a lovely bear. I think that bears are like people. Some of them, some of them are more standoffish, some are more easygoing. It's a good trait to have as a bear. To be very docile and afraid of people, that's a good trait, too. A bear is not a bear is a bear. Uh, they uh, come in all different varieties of um, their attitudes towards people and humans. But this is still a wild animal, and the bear is not allowed to stay under the porch after scaring someone. Those are the rules. You got to come out. You can't stay here anymore. You scared the jacuzzi guy. Come on. Go back in the woods. Let's go. Out. OK. 
After failing to drive the bear out with noise, Steve resorts to pepper spray. <coughs> oh. This form of non-lethal assaults the bear's senses, but it completely wears off within eight to 10 minutes. The only lasting effect is the memory, which can save the bear later from getting into another dangerous situation with people. Come on, out! Get out! All right, all right, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. You're all right. He's just showing submission by being in the tree. I, I don't have a single documented case of him doing anything wrong in town. And he was just uh, sleeping in the wrong spot, that's all. And so uh, what's done is done. I don't think he holds any hard feelings. I don't hold any hard feelings. And he'll go about his day, and I'll go about mine. That kind of live and let live attitude is something Steve tries to cultivate with the bears as long as they stay out of trouble. He loves just spending time with the bears. They calm him down. He's, he's got, Steve's got a lot of energy and, uh, you know, when he's frustrated or upset about something, he'll, he'll just take off and, you know, he'll go and be, be with a bear. He's picked up a few, few traits. <laughs> one one wildlife one. Wildlife one, one one. Can you show me ten eight? Steve's known some of the older bears more than a decade and has become friendly with a few of them. Hey, buddy. What are you doing over there? I love you, sincere old bear. One of Steve's longtime favorites is named Half Nose. He has been scra uh, scrapping all of his life. And so, like many of the old bears, he carries several scars from uh, that. Poor nose is bit right off. And he was in a fight with a bear named Arthur, and uh, Arthur bit the end of his nose off. And so, he just has half of a nose, and thus the name Half Nose. What? Did I surprise you? Me and this bear go way, way back. I've been with this bear hundreds of hours, and so we've had good times and bad times together, but it just thrills me uh, that we're here with this bear right now. Hello. All right. All right. A black bear can live into its 20s. A big part of Steve's job is to make sure the bears in town are OK. It looks like this old bear is not in good health. Steve uses a special camera to get a closer look. The eye is weeping pretty bad, but now that I can see his teeth, he's got no teeth left. I'm not going to put this bear down, but that is a messed up deal right there. All right, I hear you. I didn't know his teeth were that bad. They're just nubs. He has the uh, both lower racks, but they're just like quarter-inch nubs. And the front two canines, one is snapped off and black and infected. I can see why you're moaning, big guy. This guy would be, you know, comparable to a 90-year-old man. He's just about out of tools. Mm. Their teeth are very similar to humans, and their their feet, depending on their feeding patterns and what they've been eating, their teeth can actually rot out, and that will limit their ability to obtain the nutrients and the resources that they need to continue their life, and they'll essentially die of starvation on their own accord. Now, I hate to say it or predict any bad for him, but he's just about done. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. OK, all right. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I live in paradise. I work with uh, amazing, amazing animals. But um, you know, if you're going to work with wild animals, uh, they do die. And uh, it just breaks my heart, puts a lump in my throat. OK. Hmm. All right.
Steve Searles is devoted to protecting black bears, but he can't save all of them. In Mammoth, the bear's single biggest threat is traffic. I'm sorry to say that the, the accidents that we've responded to and seen this year is, is more than I've ever seen. Bears often misjudge how fast a car is going. With lots of tourist traffic and a major highway nearby, collisions are inevitable. I responded to a call from dispatch for a bear that had been hit on our highway coming into town. Steve doesn't know what shape the bear's in, so out of respect for the animal, he looks for it alone, bringing only his camera to document whatever may happen. I found the bear. All right. All right, pal. Steve's seen this bear before. It's a burly male he spotted for the first time a few months back. Wow, look at that guy's huge. Steve spent time over the winter studying the bear. You're OK. You're all right. Hey, mister. Hey, guy. When I respond to a call for an injured bear that I don't know, it's difficult. When it's one that I've spent a lot of time studying, it makes it extra hard. Hey, buddy. Hey, mister. Uh, the bear started pulling himself up the tree because he couldn't push with his rear legs. He was uh, clenching onto the branches with his teeth so that he could reposition his front paws and pull up that huge body weight. Are y'all busted up? Are y'all busted up? To see him pull himself up with his teeth, it broke my heart. Oh, buddy. Oh, mister. He splayed out on the branches and was in a, a lot of pain. Three of his legs were gripping into the branches, and the right rear was just hanging and dangling in the air. Steve has to make a difficult decision. The bear is in excruciating pain and his injuries are substantial. It's part of my job to put the motions aside and act responsibly for the best of the animal and do the right thing. I knew this bear had to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Working with wildlife farm. Um, has the good days and has the bad days. I got blood on my glasses. That's a bad day. I was really distraught that day and felt bad about putting my buddy down. got gloves, got up there and unwrapped them. I choose to put them back on the land. Putting a magnificent animal in the landfill, it, it just seems so disrespectful. Ending an injured bear's life is an agonizing part of Steve's job. It brings out a side of him few ever see. He sends the bear off in the tradition of the local Paiute Shoshone tribe who revere the bears. 
The Native Americans oh. taught me to use tools, whether it's the tobacco or the smudge or a prayer or a song. All that shows the respect I have for the bear and, and try to help them on a little bit. Through these small offerings, it helps to hopefully soothe his pain as well as mine. Take away, hata, hata, away. Hata, hata, hata. Not everyone considers a bear's death a tragedy. Because of their immense size, adult males are prized by hunters as trophy kills. How long ago was there somebody with a gun? Hunting is legal in California, but not in the town of Mammoth Lakes. So when Steve gets a report of a bear that's possibly been shot, he responds quickly. The man says that there was a guy with a gun 20 minutes ago, and then uh, his kids say that there's a bear that was twitching around and laying down in the backyard. If there's anybody in the area with a gun, uh, that will be a problem. So we're just going to run up here about a block away. And we'll see if we can help out a little bit. Based on where we are in the neighborhood, it's going to be likely Big Red or Little Red. Can't hardly tell them apart anymore, but this is their area. Without making too much attention. Hey, good, how are you? Steve tries to find the bear without drawing a crowd. He heads to the house where the bear was last seen and finds it under a porch. He doesn't seem to be struggling. I can see that the bear's obviously alive, and so that's a good thing. It turns out someone overreacted. The bear is just asleep. sleeping soundly. We'll probably let him be here until this evening where he can move out safely. It's midday, there's a lot of dogs, kids, people around. You just can't have this bear, you know, walking around right now. Um, it would be problematic to say the least. I know. I know. We don't mean you no harm. Yeah, I think I woke him up. Are you all right? You look OK. All right. You're a Popeye. You're a Popeye. OK. OK. The bear turns out to be Little Red, one of Steve's study bears, who typically stays out of trouble. All right. We are kind of in the middle of two busy streets, and so we don't want to move this bear right now. This ain't good. Shh. Don't scare that bear. I just don't want to start a rodeo or have people bothering him. To make sure Little Red doesn't end up in trouble, Steve keeps a close watch, but the bear doesn't like the attention. He's got his front shoulders down. The bear's body language signals his level of anxiety. Little Red feels threatened. All right. Steve tries to calm the bear by talking to it. All right, oh, I know, I know. OK, I'll back off if you do. If we're out in the forest, we would have backed off immediately. I own the pavement. 
he owns the forest, and that's the deal we have. And um, he was trying to challenge me, basically, you know, near my home, and uh, that just won't go square with me. It's a tricky situation. At any time, Little Red could overwhelm Steve and win the battle for dominance. Black bears are strong. They're immensely strong, stronger than a human by far. And it's real easy for a black bear to overcome a human. All right, all right. Oh. No, 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 no. We already talked about that. You stay right there and get some sleep. All right? With male bears, it's often a battle of wills. For Steve to maintain absolute authority, it's imperative that he gets the bears to back down every time. We're not in the middle of the forest. We're in a residential area. All of his senses know that. All of my senses know that. It's just bad bear management to let bears bluff people. It starts with me. It'll go to the tourist locals. And um, I run this town, not him. He's more than welcome to live here, but he can't bluff people off. There you go. There you go. Come on, outside. Get out of there. Earlier, Steve evicted a bear from under a house with a jacuzzi. Now, he's been called back to the same location. Well, this bear don't mean any harm, but he's found just a great spot to hang out. And he'll remember me running him off last time. And so uh, we're just going to give him a little nudge and reinforce the message that he can't be out here, be under here. Come on. You remember. Come on. Ow. Poor guy thinks he's in paradise, and I got to let him know he's not. Come on. Ow. He didn't like that pepper spray last time. Come on. Let's go. Ow. Come on. Get out of there. But when Steve finally sees the bear, he makes a surprising discovery. Oh, hi. Well, it's not a nice bear. I thought it was the same bear as last time, but it's not. You know, one out. Pepper spray was so effective the last time, Steve decides to use it again. All right, dude. You got to come up. Here we go. There he goes. Look at that big cinnamon. Wow. All right, all right. Yeah, it was the big cinnamon, and it wasn't nice bear. As much as I know about bears, I uh, mistake them sometimes, too. To make sure the large bear is staying out of trouble, Steve follows him into the forest. This place is mine and not his, and he just has to know that, and now he does. No harm, no foul. All right. Look at the steam coming out of him. I thought he could poach a spot here. I think he's kind of annoyed with me. The bear instinctively trees himself, but he's put on a lot of weight, which signals something else to Steve. The season is coming to an end. Boy, look at his big tummy. Wow, oh, you're bigger than a house, dude. He looks like a, a Wookiee or something. Look, he's too fat. Can you imagine the pressure on his toes right now? He's a seven-foot bear with a big old gut. And I would guess that he is over 400 pounds right now. He could probably do it a little bit faster, but he's really at weight right now. He'll probably hunker down up there until uh, nightfall tonight. What a beauty. The bear is securely treed. Hopefully, he's learned the same lesson that Nice Bear did and won't be back. Nice Bear hasn't been under there in a month. And so that's a success. And now this bear knows it's uh, off limits. We'll let him be as long as he stays in the forest and not under somebody's house. To keep the enormous animals at a safe distance from people, Steve often depends on his ability to think like the bears. When he hears of a sizable bear inside a culvert where it doesn't belong, he knows exactly how to handle it. There's a lot of kids that come home from school and um, they tease the bear that's in there. and. And so I, I just don't want him there. And so I'm going to go take care of this real quick. There's a green belt that's adjacent to the property and uh, make it super easy to um, have the bear go off into the forest. 
Oh, this is one of the larger culverts. Uh, they're just storm drains, really. This one's so tall that he can stand up in there and, uh, you know, get out really quickly and get in quickly. It's not the first time Steve has had to forcibly eject a bear from this culvert. We have a bear living in the pipe. It's been living there for a couple weeks now, and the kids check the culvert every time they come home from school, try to hear the bear growl or ag aggravate the bear in any way that they can. I'm going to go ahead and deploy a um, flashbang device. <laughs> But this time, there are no bystanders. It's only Steve and the bear. Well, where the bears are and what their habits are, I try to keep that secret. The police are out doing police work. I get to uh, move that bear along. And so um, the more that I can keep the bear's privacy and my privacy, it's just the better it is. I'm going to launch just a green meanie. Uh, that's what I used last time. When deployed, the non-lethal green meanie flies erratically and makes a loud whistling noise that will scare the bear, but not hurt it. It doesn't work. The culvert is the length of a football field, and Steve can't get a good angle on his shot, so the green meanie barely makes a sound. He tries again. The full effect of the noise is lost inside the long cavernous culvert. But still, the bear knows something is not right, and instead of leaving, he feels safer hidden inside. But it's getting late, and the kids will be home from school shortly, so this bear has to move now. Come on, out. Come on. Working with the aluminum bat is just kind of uh, my calling card. The bears are used to it. I've done it for Come probably on. 15 Ow. years, and so I've always used that same bat. And I think on. the bears have you know, become accustomed to it. When they hear that bat bang, and they know it's time to go. Finally, it works. Get out. Out. Go in the woods. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of there. Go on. You bad bear. Go on. But when Steve looks inside the tube, he makes a shocking discovery. A second bear. Oh, hi. You got to come out. Once again, Steve finds himself in an unpredictable situation. Lo and behold, there wasn't one bear. There was two. To have two bears bed together is really quite odd. He deploys a cherry bomb. The non-lethal explosion should be enough to persuade the second bear to seek safer ground. Go on. Go on, yeah. Last couple of years, we've seen the bears teaming up more. And uh, I don't understand it all yet, but uh, we'll keep studying it and learning from them. But uh, the, the buddy bears seem to be in there uh, coexisting just as well as we do. It's just another twist in what has made this the strangest year Steve has ever seen. This bear has left the area and into the forest. I'm 1098, 108 available. Everything I know about bears, they taught me. I try to bounce that back and teach them. I'm not the nicest guy in the world. I uh, pretty much run alone. I work alone. I am kind of a solo guy. The bears were kind of solo, and so it really works out for both of us. As the season comes to a close, Steve spends some much needed quiet time with his bears. Hey, big fella. Oh, no. You're all right. Yeah, this bear has certainly made weight. He is, um, looking very fit. We're glad to see him. These bears won't be in town much longer. They'll go up to altitude where they make their dens, and they'll be out of town for another six months. 
It's just a real magical time of year for me that you know I can see them up close and personal before they go into the long den. It's a bittersweet time. Steve can never be sure which bears will return the following spring, but in his own way, he sends them off. Boy, would I love to share with everybody what it's like to sit this close with a bear. Yeah, I don't know how to put it into words, but... I'll miss him. I will. He helped me a lot more than I help you. You have a good night. They're the juvenile delinquents of the bear world. Go on, get! Pushing boundaries. Put it down. Defying authority. You bad bear! And breaking all the rules. These guys are full-blown knuckleheads. I need everybody to move this area. It's critical to teach them right from wrong. Go on, get! Get! Bears that don't learn die. Do you understand what's going on? and it's one man's mission to keep them alive. It's all right, come on down, let's go. Steve Searles, the Bear Whisperer. Get out of there, you bad bear. You're gonna have to work this out. This season, one bear causes a public scene. It's kind of exciting. Get out of here, go on. Three bears face down Steve. No. While another shocks the entire community. If the bear's on scene, it'll be shot on sight. Go now. I heard a growl. The unthinkable has happened. He walked right up in front of me. A visitor in town has two mysterious puncture wounds. There's two on scene right now. Did one of Steve's bears cross the line? That kind of thing will get you killed. What is that right there? This is the Mammoth Lakes Bear Report. Skies are clear, winds are calm. Looks like another gorgeous day in Mammoth. Spring in the Eastern Sierras. The start of the six month feeding season when Mammoth Lake's most celebrated residents make their way back into town. We've got two young bears up in a tree. Not sure what they're going to do next, but tune in later and we'll let you know. Oh, look at oh. that. That's, great. <laughs> That's amazing. How cool. Look at him. Thousands and thousands of people have seen bears in my community, and I'm proud of it. I never got this close to a bear. If you catch a big fish here in Mammoth, you'll tell the story, you know, 10 or 15 times. You see a bear in Mammoth, and uh, you'll repeat that story for the rest of your life. And the chances of seeing a bear here are good from mid-April to late October, when they go back into hibernation. Thanks to Steve, the town successfully coexists with the local bear population all summer long. Steve has put Mammoth farther ahead than other communities. And I think it's because he's got that on the ground, um, out of book experience. Ooh. Ooh. Steve does it his way, and it, he does it based on long years of trial and error. There's a really long list of successes and uh, bears that are just push button bears, I call them. Half bib, big red, the big blonde, all those are examples of bears that have not been involved in issues. They're just trouble free, and uh, they're just a pleasure to have living in our community. But many bears don't start out this way. Often the biggest challenge for Steve comes from the youngest bears. What in the world? They would be the teenagers of the bear society, and um, just like we grew out of those dumb things that we did. They're just in the sharpest part of the learning curve. Get out of there. If we were 60 miles out in the wilderness with this same scenario, are those one year and year and a half old cubs any smarter? Heck no. Uh, they can get in trouble falling out of trees, falling into uh, swift water, predators, uh, coyote, 
um, other uh, male bears. It's just a matter of learning uh, what is scary and dangerous and what's not. <laughs> In the life cycle of a California black bear, cubs are taught by their mothers. In the spring, the bears will emerge. The females will nurture their young, teaching the young what to eat, how to eat, where to obtain the food. And that's a very critical time for a cub life. After about a year and a half to two years, the female will push off the cubs to go find an area or a territory of their own. If young bears want to live in Mammoth Lakes, they must learn to navigate a human society. Go on now, get out, hey, get out of there. Go on, get out, get out of there. So Steve often plays the role of surrogate parent. They don't have the benefit of their mother teaching them, so I'll try to step in and do what I can to help them learn the ways of man. There you go, let's go. To teach them, Steve uses a variety of non-lethal techniques. He can literally yell and scream and just use his voice if need be, bang a baseball bat and scare Go him in back. that manner. Go back. He also uses what they call flash bangs that are noise devices that sizzle and whiz as they go past the bear to scare it. And he also, in many cases, will use a rubber bullet, which just gives a bear a good sting and lets him feel like this isn't where I want to be. I'm getting the heck out of here. The bat bear. Bears that are a little bit uh, too friendly or getting into garages or uh, stealing out of cars, that kind of thing. I typically spend more time tracking them, following them, reprimanding them. Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. It's just an ongoing conversation and education uh, for me and the bears. Is that you, Ace? Is that you? One of my most favorite bears and probably one of Mammoth's biggest success stories. Ace was once the town's most notorious young bear. Come on, get out of there. It has broken into as many as eight or nine homes. About half of those homes have been occupied. Police were ordered to shoot Ace on sight. I'm not willing to compromise a human life to uh, save a bear. But Steve believed he could turn the young bear around. What are you doing? He tried every non-lethal technique he had. Finally, it paid off. Get out of here! He hasn't been responsible for a single 911 call in all last year and all so far this year. I'm very glad you're alive. Every year, there's another ace, but nothing could prepare Steve for the challenge of this season's young bears. Come on, one, one, let's one. Come on, one. I'm gonna be out uh, for crowd control. Come on, one, one. We're um, just gonna roll up here to Lincoln House at the village. Uh, the last couple of nights, a young bear was swimming in the pond and uh, it makes her a cute story, but it's just not okay. North Village is a multi-story mall setting with lots of restaurants and people and uh, activities. Mono one, wildlife one. Wildlife one, one. It's a small cub uh, in a tree in North Village and uh, we'll be staying on scene until the bears left the area. Copy, good for. Could you move back, please? If you interviewed the 200 people that were there, they'd all say it was neat or cute. It's kind of exciting. That's for sure. People aren't intimidated by small bears. Typically, you know, you'll see people that'll put their kids right up next to the bears and want to take pictures with them. They have this idea that the bears are, are pets or they're friendly. That's not it. They're actually, you know, they're wild animal and they they're, can be dangerous. I need everybody to move this area. When the bear comes down the tree, I'm likely gonna shoot him on the ass with a rubber bullet and let him know it's not okay to be with the guests and everybody here having dinner. An hour later, night is fast approaching. The crowd is growing. Can you see his face? Yeah. And the young bear refuses to come down. As far as bear calls go, uh, this is kind of my worst nightmare. Go now. 
He's going to be moving pretty quickly. So we want to make sure that there's a way for the bear to get out that, you know, we're not going to run him right into some people and, and get them scared or, or injured. He's trying to come down. There's too many people around. I'm going to stay right here on scene until he touches that grass. And when he does, I'm going to light him up with rubber cock. It's a 12 gauge rubber slug, gets shot at him, doesn't typically break the skin or cause any permanent damage to him. We are backed up on the police department. We have 12 gauge shotguns. If the bear turns and charges Steve or charges into the crowd or becomes a, a threat to the public, then we're there able to stop that and put the bear down immediately. He could stay up there for days if he wanted to. He can obviously outlast us. I predict that as the crowd winds down and people are quieter, um, he'll come down. Oh, he's coming. Get out of here, go on. Get out of here, you bad bear. Wow. It's very so good. Yes. Yeah. Would have scared me bad. Once it hit the ground, he tagged the bear with uh, multiple rubber buckshots. But it's definitely going to get their attention and tell me probably shouldn't be in here. Obviously, the bear has learned quite a lesson. I'd much rather fire four rounds of rubber uh, striking the bear and then have him shot or killed at a later date. If he needs any more education, we can do that for him too. But uh, hopefully that'll be enough for tonight and we won't have uh, any more issues with this young bear uh, in with a bunch of people. Mono one wildlife one. I'll be 98 from the call and patrolling area. This year's bear season has just begun. There's three bears playing in the pond on the golf course right now. The three young bears are the first to make it into town. Copy that, thank you. After a chaotic night with one of them, Steve is on high alert. that to come down. The two of the bears are siblings. The third, oh, stop. What, what was that? You're going to have to practice. Uh, the third one is not a litter mate. These three bears are just playing, and they're not doing anything wrong. They just want them to get into harm's way. When they're roughhousing like this, they forget where they are. Hello. It's the knuckleheads. Uh, when it comes to young bears uh, under two, I don't name them because, you know, statistically half of them are going to die. And so maybe to preserve my own feelings and preserve the community's feelings, unless it's necessary, uh, I try to not name those young bears until they're after two. Oh, that's beautiful. There's my paycheck this week. Pretty rough on each other. Uh, those teeth are very, very sharp. And uh, even though they look like a teddy bear or something, they can inflict harm. It's all part of the learning process for these bears and the pecking order that they're going to slowly grow into. There you go. Beat them up. Beat them up. Hello. Oh. You know, I see the most worst stuff in my life, and then I see the coolest stuff. and. Um, makes me feel weird sometimes and uh, this is really really cool and uh, fills my heart you know it makes me want to go out and help the little guys even more hello hello you're all right I know who's babysitting who sometimes probably a 50 50 um, the bears help me as much as I help them 
That's a pretty fair deal. What is it? What is it? Uh-oh. They are arguing. Is that trash? Hey, you guys, put it down. Hey. No, 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 no. No. One of the most important lessons for these young bears to learn is to stay away from unnatural foods. Put it down. No trash. No. No. No, no, no. Get out of there. No. Look at it all over your face. Move away. For brains. It's some kind of... Turkey breast skins. That's not what's in here. It smells like ranch dressing. That's what it is. We gotta keep human food out of bears because it draws a connection between the people and then the food source. And so the bear does become conditioned to come back for that same food source. But even after being chased off, the bears are back and willing to defy Steve to get what they want. No. Knock it off. Move away. Move away. How dare you? No. You guys need to learn. Go over there and get in the tree. Go on. Go on. You've worn out. You're welcome. No. Do not challenge people for food. They're testing their boundaries. No. Two of the young bears back away, but the third bear returns. To send the message that this behavior will not be tolerated, Steve stands by with pepper spray. Part of my job is uh, cruel to be kind, to educate that bear that this has got to stop. This stuff works great. Uh, they don't like it one single bit. And uh, hopefully that'll teach them a lesson for today. Don't be challenging me or anybody else over a food source at all. That is absolutely off limits. It's a lose-lose situation for the bear. When the bear has unnatural food sources that it relies on, it becomes more aggressive. It gets closer to humans more often. And unfortunately, it may result in the loss of a bear life, which is one thing we're trying to avoid at all costs here in Mammoth. During bear season, Steve works seven days a week and is on call 24 hours a day. Probably my strongest thing I have in my life is my wife and my son. Just a, a hug from my son or a hug from my wife means a lot to me. I have been in Mammoth since 1985. I met Steve through friends. I used to see him at parties and stuff. Behind every great man is a greater woman. I get the, the applause and all the thank yous, and uh, my wife does everything that makes my lifestyle possible. On the agenda this morning, helping Steve maintain his distinctive mountain man look. Been trimming Steve's beard for hmm, maybe close to 20 years. The last time he shaved and had a haircut was on our wedding day 20 years ago. 20, 20 or 16 days and three hours. <laughs> and Talk it up, hon. A trim, please. <laughs> my dad actually gave him the haircut. I think Steve was more nervous getting his haircut by my dad than, <laughs> than actually getting married. <laughs> Steve's routine in bear season, you know, he's like a, like a puppy or a dog or a kid. Comes home when he's thirsty and hungry. Thanks, hon. Oh, hang on, I see a couple of strays already. Four weeks into the feeding season,
the three young bears are now venturing out individually looking for food. There's two things that a bear goes through. They're wandering about the woods looking for whatever they can encounter during their normal course of action. But if they encounter something new, they'll still try it. My neighbor just called and there's a bear, so we're gonna go take a look. A bear can smell food three miles away, and one of the young bears is drawn to a picnic table in a residential neighborhood. When Steve arrives, the bear is gone. Look at all this garbage. Holy cow. Wow. Oh, these people are just pigs. It looks like some pizza boxes and stuff. My neighbors were so irresponsible and disrespectful uh, that they left all their garbage out, and uh, the bear was uh, hooking into it, and it just breaks my heart. You know, I love the bears, and um, it's just the epitome of the struggle I face every day. All this trash needs to be picked up. The bear's been standing here eating the You can clean all the up right now. People make a bad bear, actually, by allowing them to become habituated to our food and trash and other things. So it's really a people problem. 20 minutes later, Hello. the same bear has been spotted less than a mile away. We'll be on our way. No, get out of there. Get out of there. Go on now, get, knock it off. Hi, we just followed him up here and seen him yeah. in your trash. Is there somewhere I can lock this up? It's full. The people that live in Mammoth will tolerate uh, more from the bears than I will. I know the bears individually, and when they mess up or they're wrong place at the wrong time, I really take it personally. I don't want them to have that extra strike against them. The young bear has backed himself into a corner. A bear, a bear, a bear. He's now between apartment buildings and a busy highway. He doesn't belong in this situation. He can see the traffic, the cars going by. We want him to be uncomfortable. We want him to have a bad time. He can't be hanging out in the middle of the day on the main street of Mammoth. Or we'll end up picking him off the road, or he'll get himself into other trouble. Hey, 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 we're not gonna chase the bear. We're not gonna do that. Look, right there, right there. Hey, 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 hey. Leave this one alone. I'm gonna have to get a lot more heavy handed with the young bear. The more time that we're on him, uh, just like a child or a dog, uh, the repetitious reprimanding of bears that sometimes is necessary. I'm 100% uh, sure that uh, I'll be working with the bear again, if not today, tomorrow. Bears remember locations where they've been successful finding food. So the next day, Steve returns to the same area the bear had gotten into trouble. Sure enough, the young bear is back. There he is. Damn it. No trash. Get out of there. Hey, get out of there. Hey, no trash. How dare you, no. Go on, get out of there, the bad bear. I barely lit him up with a little bit of rubber buckshot and let him know, you know, that you're welcome to be here, but only on our rules. And um, that's what I do, I spank. But there are three young bears this season, and Steve can't be everywhere at once. These small bears that we work with every year, they can be a handful. It takes a village to raise a child, and it takes our town to raise these silly little bears. 
As the feeding season heats up, Steve gets busier. A single round deployed out on Sierra Star for just a bear grazing near the tourists. By midsummer, he patrols day and night, looking for things that might get his bears into trouble, like open dumpsters. Well, I just pulled up, and um, this is the first one I found. Um, when you hook this little guy, the bear, with all his might, can't break this chain. And so um, unhooked, it's easily opened and defeated. We'll just see maybe the trash company just emptied it. Uh, nope, it's got trash in it. And so there is the problem. Leaving the dumpster unlocked is just no good. And is there a connection between feeding bears in a town and getting them shot? There really is. Don't ever feed a bear where you don't want them to come back to. Feeding bears certainly does happen. It's important for people to understand that it's, it's not something that's allowed under town law in the town of Mammoth Lakes, under state law or under federal law. It puts them at risk. It's habituating them to an unnatural situation. It's making it comfortable for them to get close to people. It can lead to that bear's destruction. Steve is called out to the local town yard to help a man who's in a standoff with a bear. A uh, guy's down at the town fuel pumps who's asking for me in particular to come down that the bear is not moving away from him and the gas pumps so that he could refuel. The local town yard, where police cars and buses are serviced, is only blocks away from the industrial dumping yards. When Steve arrives, the bear is gone. What's the bear look like? He wasn't that big. Uh-huh. Um, but he just like right up between these, this rock and this small tree with that light point now where he just went. Yeah. But he sat right here for the longest time until you, as soon as you pull in is when he took off. Steve spots trash on the hillside. Right and more unlocked dumpsters. What the friggin' heck? You can't blame that on tourists. This is just the epitome of the struggle I face every day. To see them eating unnatural food and people being irresponsible can lead to more and more problems. By the height of the season, the big bears have moved into the most desirable feeding areas pushing out the smaller bears. And sometimes, the smaller bears resort to dangerous measures to get what they want. It's the uh, condominium project, and uh, it's been reported that the bears are hopping the fences and getting into the trash cans. Uh-oh, there he is. There he is, running with trash in front of the car. It's going to be a really small bear dark head and kind of a light-colored cape. And it does look like a female. Steve gets a closer look. This is far more serious than just a bear foraging through trash. It just blew out the window of that car. Breaking into cars is exactly the kind of bad behavior that, if left unchecked, can lead to a bear losing its life. I want the pair to reapproach and uh, hop in that car again. I'll teach her a lesson that she'll never, ever forget. Yeah, I can see it from here. And it's going to re-enter the car. Before he can deal with the bear, Steve is distracted. Look at all these folks. Uh, you're going to uh, tranquilize it? No, no, no. Uh, there, we, nobody does that in California. The bear can either live here and have good manners or I won't live at all. So um, what I do is teach bears and teach them good respect for people in situations they shouldn't be in. So what do you, how do you? Rubber bullets, pyrotechnics, flashbang devices, um, pepper spray, all kinds of different just devices. Them, but... Not just to scare them, but to teach them uh, what they're not allowed okay. to do and what they're allowed to do. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So where, where did it go? Did you, did did you, did you see it? Or did uh, it I don't know, but um, I didn't realize you were standing here. I'm glad I did. Once Steve is assured the group will stay where they are, he goes back to look for the bear. The bear's right there. He went back into where the bear had hidden, 
And next thing we know, we hear like three or four, a big, loud, bam, 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 bam. Get out of here. Go on, get. The girls are freaking out, and we're kind of scared. You bad bear, get. The rounds that I fired were all non-lethal. The first rounds on, yeah. struck the bear. Um, the other rounds uh, did not. But uh, it sure lets the bear know that this is not a good thing to be doing. You bad bear! After running the bear off, Steve finds a candy wrapper. Chocolate. That leads him to a trail of food left in the car. We can see bagels on the floor. Water, drinks. They're really lucky they didn't have more damage than this. They had both windows down a little bit with the doors locked, and so the bear just pulled on it one time and popped it. I mean, we learned a valuable lesson ourselves to just kind of, you know, keep our cars clean. Immediately, I tell my kids, you know, go clean your cars out, take everything out of it, all the candy, any soda, anything else. So, so they did. We're going to continue to patrol the area. Uh, this uh, car owner gets the free sticker. And um, they're not going to get fined for feeding bears. I think that the uh, damage that's done says enough for that. Hey, hello. Yes? We'll be on our way. Thank you. A friend of mine just called me, and uh, a young cub is uh, in his backyard. We're just going to run up there and uh, see which bear it is. The homes in Mammoth butt up against the forest, and many of the residents like to document the bears in town. To me, they're like the spirit of the forest. I call them the spirit of the forest because they're so quiet. I mean, you can be walking and not even realize they're there. One of the reasons we have so many bears in this particular area is we have everything here that the bears need to live. We have the, the woodland where they can get privacy and sleep back here, which they do, and can get away from people and other bears and, and uh, have a peaceful existence. But this young bear hasn't come here to relax. He's trying to figure out how to get that bird feeder down. Bird seed is very nutritious. The, the seeds are packed with fats and oils that they require, as well as protein. They readily will take to it and enjoy it immensely. It's almost like ice cream to them. People in Mammoth are encouraged to, to get the bird feeders so that the bears can't get to them, because they uh, potentially could associate bird feeders with homes and houses. So what we've done is we've strung wire between pine trees, a long run of wire, up very high. He then ended up uh, going to a neighbor's house. And she uh, just happened to have set her bird feeders up out on branches, hoping that the bear couldn't reach out far enough to, to grab them. just grabbed it and crunched it in half. Go on, get up there. Go on. Go on, get. Go on, get. That's the crack cocaine of a bear's life, is this silly bird food. Ah, get. He moved out of the area respectfully. He's done what he is supposed to. He's back in the deep woods. Everything's good again. Steve takes the opportunity to reinforce the young bear's obedient behavior. Are you starting to learn? The monotone I use with the bears lets them know whether or not he's on my terms or we're on his terms. And I'm laying on the ground, I'm being submissive to him. He's out in the thick forest. He's under the canopy. He's in no trouble at all. I compare it to raising my son. Even when I have to reprimand my son, 
I'm loving on him the very next minute. These bears can understand that exact same principle. All right. All right. Once the bear does the right thing, then we're back to the relationship that we were having uh, before that incident. All right. Sleepy. <laughs> This bear seems to finally be learning how to live in town, but there are still two other bears who have a long way to go. Thank you very much for calling. I'll be in route right now. One of the young bears has really crossed the line. This morning, I woke up to a bunch of racket and realized that the bear had actually squeezed itself through this little window. I didn't even know that this window was open and as soon as the bear squeezed out it actually turned around and tried to go back in so um bear strips are down she had assembled nail boards uh to put outside of her windows and doors uh to keep the bear from standing up on its back legs and hopping in the uh, window and the unfortunate thing is that the bear has been rewarded by coming in my house so essentially my house is kind of like a calling card at this point I think also the fact that my house is in proximity to this campground doesn't really help too much either. If that bear comes today, um, call me immediately. Yeah, I will. All right. Breaking into homes is a serious offense. Steve needs to find the bear and teach him a lesson, fast. He heads to the nearby campground. The bear has taken refuge in a tree. But the dogs put him up there. Anytime a bear is afraid or concerned or hears a loud noise, um, he's going to tree every time. And being at this age, they spend half of their day up in the tree. Oh, oh look at him. So How cool. Look at him put his chin up on his that head. <laughs> as long as I keep him up there, part of the punishment, all these people that have been gathered around, the dogs that were here on scene, makes him very uncomfortable. And keeping the bear uncomfortable is the plan. It's the only way to teach the bear that being around people is dangerous. I feel sorry. Uh, I do. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. All right, you guys, everybody get a photo? Yep. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Make sure your camp is clean, OK? Check your cars, make sure there's no food. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Once the crowd is cleared, Steve focuses all his energy on the bear and getting him out of the tree. It's all right, come on down, let's go. To move the bear, Steve mimics the sound a sow would make to her cub. It's a very guttural uh, tone that comes down below her throat. I'll use that to calm young bears. I've done it so many times with so many bears. As the bear moves down, Steve approaches the tree armed with pepper spray, a potent aerosol that overwhelms the senses but wears off quickly. Come on. Come on. Poor little guy. I don't want to hurt him, but this has got to end. The bear bites into a tree branch, signaling his level of anxiety. So we're just playing cat and mouse. He's going to try to come down again right now. Nasty, nasty stuff. I hate to. Uh... That's some nasty stuff. Um, the bears hate it. <clears throat> he really. There was a little puff of wind right then, and uh, so we got a little back spray. But um, yeah, the bears have to learn that people are mean. 
They'll spray them, they'll run them over with their cars, they'll kill them, they'll shoot them, they'll entrap them. And uh, he doesn't get it, but um, he just has to learn or he'll get, he'll die. Since the pepper spray missed the bear, Steve must try again. I'll stand here for as long as it takes. I'll do it for days or weeks. This time, he stands by with a shotgun loaded with rubber buckshot. Come on. Go on, get! You bad bear! Go on, get! Just the noise to the shotgun racking, it's all a uh, non-lethal deterrent for the bear. Like a dog or a child, hopefully he can learn and uh, become uh, a member of our community and these problems won't be an issue. Ten weeks into the season, the big bears have moved in and the younger bears are pushed out of the prime feeding areas. The three young bears Steve has been working with are staying out of trouble at least for now. Seven, next seven, six, roger. Steve gets a late night bear call for a shocking incident, unlike anything he's encountered before. What happened right here? One injured victim with two uh, puncture wounds to the right arm. A wounded man claims he was knocked over by a small bear. They got knocked over, and then when did you rec realize they had a hole in your arm? Oh, I, I it was sore, so I just took off my, my, I had a jacket on, I just took the jacket and I didn't sit, my shirt was bloody. Did he bite you in? I don't know what it is. I, actually, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's hard to, because there's no real puncture wounds in the, in the. It sure looks like a puncture wound. Huh? Well, this one is. No, through the, through the jacket. This, this is just a scratch, I think. It's Don, huh? Yeah. Thank you, Don. I appreciate your patience, but this is really concerning to us. And but I, I, I really do think I spooked him. He's come for the arts festival, and he is selling his wares, which is pottery, and uh, this event happened. I was just walking down here from the restrooms, right? And I came across right here, and I heard a, I heard a growl. And I went, I turned, I don't even know which way I turned, and then that's when he, he just boom, hit me could be uh, that he startled the bear or frightened the bear. The bear was just bullying him over to get out of harm's way. And then after he hit you, he I hit the, I hit the ta table. I, no, I, I slammed in the table and, and fell down. That's Where do you I, think he hit the table? Where did the I? Here, right? My arm. Yeah. We need to get him down to the bed. Yeah. The man's description and the mysterious puncture wounds don't add up. A lot of times they push. I could have stabbed him. Could have just been a stab. I think it's a canine bite. Like, yeah. <laughs> Paramedics arrive on scene and confirm Steve's suspicions. He told me that they're three-eighths of an inch deep, and it's a bite and not a claw mark. <laughs> serious. I haven't seen a bear bite up here. It's the first one. Usually, they run away. They seem to get a little more aggressive. And that behavior is not tolerated by anyone in the town of Mammoth Lakes. If the bear's on scene in just the next 30 minutes, he'll be shot on sight. I wanted to attack the guy. But identifying the bear responsible isn't easy. We don't use collars or ear tags or uh, telemetry on our bears. And so I'd hate to see the wrong bear shot right now. The RP is describing a small, dark, 150-pound uh, uh, bear that would be one of the knuckleheads. These bears are very, very powerful. And what they would do just to nip you would cause an injury like that. Police are on the lookout for any bear that matches the description of the young bears. We had already made that decision that if we could locate that bear in a timely manner, that that bear was going to be taken out. And we would be justified in doing so. People versus animals, you know, I go on the side of people every time. The bear returns to where the event happened. We'll hear the shot. Uh, he'll, he'll shoot the bear immediately. This thing charges me. I'm going to open it up with beanbags. And Jesse, I expect you'll be 
right behind me. We have a local officer with probably five or six rounds of non-lethal beanbags. The other officer is a marksman uh, training officer that is on scene with a high-powered rifle. And uh, if the bear returns to where the event happened, he'll shoot the bear immediately. While police officers patrol the area, Steve investigates what might have provoked the bear. That's the attraction right there. A snack bar vendor from the arts festival left out food. This is just bull These people come from out of town, and uh, this is just prime food for the bears here. And so uh, they bait them in, and somebody got hurt tonight. This is flour, sugar, granulated garlic, coconut milk. This is what started the whole thing. The bear was uh, taking advantage of that food source. And as the gentleman was uh, walking through the venue in the middle of the night, uh, he scared the bear. The bear only had one way out. That guy, unfortunately, was in his way and was knocked over and uh, ended up with two holes in his arm. Steve and the police comb the area but the bear is nowhere to be found. The mess still hasn't been cleaned up. The food's still on site, but the bear wasn't seen directly after the event. Um, as every hour ticks by, uh, he will buy himself time on this earth. We waited for the bear to return and kind of cruised the area. And it was gone. Twenty-four hours after a man suffered a rare bear bite, he's okay. Steve returns to the site, determined to not have a repeat incident. This is ground zero. This is where it all occurred last night. The gentleman who was nipped by the bear is right here behind me, and I think I owe him at least that to uh, make sure a bear doesn't come anywhere near here tonight. And it doesn't take long for Steve to spot a bear nearby. I'm going to turn my light on him and walk up a few feet, and I'm going to hopefully uh, shoot him multiple times for even being here. If this other young bear comes here, I'm going to treat him the same way, too. Get out of here! We fired off some rubber rounds to let the bear know to run away from people. Mono one, wildlife one. I fired three more non-lethal rounds at the same location uh, in case you get a call. Copy three non-lethal. And I dare say the bear, you know, won't be back very soon. It is my belief to this day that is that bear was ricocheting off the guy that he did nip him in the arm. The bear didn't return. It was just a freak collision in the middle of the night. The bear bite remains an isolated incident. In the weeks following that night, Steve continued to carefully monitor the three young bears. Today, all are alive and well, thanks to Steve and his dedication. I see things that are magical. They are the most positive images that anybody could witness. And maybe an hour later, I have to go to calls that, gosh, are not good at all. We OK? We're going to work together tomorrow? All right. Go back to sleep if you agree. I'll be in route right now, then I'll be on scene just in a moment. Six more cabins are broken in In Mammoth Lakes, California. He came right to our window. One bear turns everything upside down. The bear comes up, breaks in windows, breaks in doors. Only the man they call the bear whisperer knows just how far this bear will go. That just gave me shivers up my spine that she could be alive and wreak havoc like she did a year ago. Are you all right, ma'am? It's like a crazed animal at this point. What it did to our community, what it did to me, it was all just shattering. And in the town that loves its bears. It's all right, good girl. No one thought it would come to this. There she is. You got a good shot at her. Oh, yeah. 
Mammoth Lakes, a mountain resort town located in the middle of some of California's last true wilderness. We happen to live in God's country. We're a day's walk from Yosemite. Um, it's just paradise up here, and so uh, the people know it, and uh, the bears know it too. The Mammoth Lakes area is very popular with black bears, and the residents down there have really taken to these bears. They feel that those are their bears, and rightfully so. I mean, they learn to live with these bears, and they become residents of the community just as, you know, the humans that live in the area are. As the town's wildlife patrol officer, it's Steve Searle's job to teach bears to be respectful of people and their houses. A bear that encroaches on either can end up being killed by authorities. No. Move away. He relates to bears and is able to convince them not to get into people's territory in a dangerous way. He teaches them how to live with people. And he's been teaching people how to live with bears. From the minute the bears emerge from winter hibernation, Steve is on patrol. They've lost approximately 50 to 60% of their body weight surviving through the winter. So when they wake up in the spring, they're motivated entirely by food. They will wake up in the morning and they spend their entire day searching out food sources. The cycle of life that we see in mammoth, the sows and cubs, the lessers, uh, come in the very first in the spring for the food sources that are available in town. They're welcome in Mammoth, as long as they don't forget their bears. We're about 200 yards from my house. It's uh, one of my favorite places in town. And uh, the bears uh, come here and, and uh, hang out. They have everything they need, safety, um, food, water, and habitat. Natural food is good. Human food is bad. It's especially important to keep mothers, called sows, away from people food. Get out of there. Hey. Get out of there, you naughty bear. None of that. Sows teach their cubs how to eat and how to forage in a very peculiar way. The sow will eat an item, and then at the same time, the cub is watching what the sow is eating. The cub will come over to the sow and will sniff her breath. And since they have such an immense sense of smell, that registers in their brain in the memory banks that whatever mom just ate must be good food. And they'll recall on that memory at a later date and time to identify whether something's food or not. If a cub's memory banks register people food as good, it won't know how to find natural food and won't know how to teach its own cubs down the line. The longer we work with them and keep them alive, the smarter they get and the more learned they are about the ways of man, stay out of traffic, stay out of cabins, stay out of garages, stay out of cars. But each year, there are some bears who just don't get it. Every morning, Steve checks on the bears in town to make sure they're okay. Today, he is one step behind a young sow and her cub. Hello. Hi, good girl. Uh, knowing the topography and geography of the area and where the roads lie, I could see that the bears were going to cross Lake Mary Road. And so I went up there and um, uh, waited for them so that they could maybe uh, cross a little bit safer. Cars do get going pretty fast right there. Here we go. Here we go. As far as doing traffic control for my bears, um, it happens, you know, on a regular basis. I wish I could be there every time a bear crosses the road. She's right here, right on top. 99% of the time, they cross safely. The other times, it's uh, most of the, often fatal. It's all right. It's all right. There you go. Go get your baby. There you go. There you go, pick her up. Let's go, come on. But the sow doesn't bring the cub back with her. Something's caught her attention. Where are you going? She was absolutely going somewhere. She wasn't fooling around. You could really see she had her nose up in the air and uh, w was you know, on a mission. 
20 minutes later. All right, so you're in nine, the bears are at five. I'll be in route right now. Thank you very much for calling. Steve finds out exactly where the two were headed. Mono one, wildlife one. Wildlife one, mono one. Can you show me code four, 10 six, lower falls tract? Code four, 10 six, lower falls tract. The sow and cub. Uh, we're just trying to break into a cabin, and so we're going to respond up here and see if it's so that she's trying to bust in would be a bad, bad thing. Hi. Good. How are you, sir? And you saw the bears? Oh, yeah. It was a, a mama and a very young cub. These old cabins up here, you know, close to 100 years old, they were built as uh, fishing homes. They're all single pane windows. They're easy to break into. It's kind of a target rich environment. Hello? Did I see by the sow's body posturing and her nose in the air that she was on her way to commit a misdemeanor? Did I know she was going to break up a door jam today? Uh, no, I'm not that good. For now, there's not much Steve can do. The bears have left the area. I need to catch them red-handed, and anything five minutes or longer after the act, I, I'll just pass on it. The bear won't have a clue what's going on, and I, I don't roll that way. Steve will work with a bear for any number of reasons. Get out of there! He uses non-lethal techniques to keep them away from crowds. You bad bear! to move them out of dangerous areas, and to let them know where they can and cannot search for food. Get out of there, you bad bear. I have dozens of tools at my disposal, everything from doing nothing and observing uh, through pepper spray, pyrotechnics, flashbang devices, audio devices, things that smell, things that whistle. Impact devices, rubber bullets, every situation's different, and my job is to do the very best thing I can for the people and the bears. Copy that, thank you. Less than 24 hours after the sow and cubs attempted break in, there's another bear report. This time, the bear got in. I have no tolerance for busting up homes. It really pisses me off when bears uh, do this. Did you folks just get here? We just got here. I saw glass. I looked at the window, it was broken. I'm like, that's odd. I thought we were robbed. The kitchen is completely trashed. Food everywhere, the, the refrigerator open, banged up, soda cans, things I didn't even know what they were, ripped open tons of bite marks. You, know, you can see the slobber from the bear, and so you can pretty much estimate, you know, just from my height, the height of the bear on this single pane window. It's a front paw print and a rear paw print. It's going to be an adult bear with this set right here. And if you look, um, the bear came in and out more than once. And uh, unfortunately, I'm guessing that's a uh, cub print right oh, there. 97, a frame like A bear bringing her cub into this house. That's just terrible. The bear was in here more than once. Stealing is a bad thing. Mothers teach their bears, and teaching them how to break into homes will just lead to them getting killed. So you think they smell and not saw? They smell something? Their sense of smell is miles and miles, not just hundreds of yards. And they know whether there's pizza in the fridge or whatever. They're very, very uh, strong tar smell. Your nose is just to hold your glasses on. It doesn't even work in comparison to a bear. Wow. So should I be Maybe worried about the bacon in my car right now? The bacon's got to come out of the, the car right car. now. Yeah, uh-huh. Bear break-ins in Mammoth are rare. But last year, a bear named Blondie changed everything. Blondie was responsible for 51 different entries of homes in about a half a square mile. 
It was expensive homes, lower end homes, cabins, never a tent, never a trash can. She knew uh, to walk right to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator and the freezer and help herself. Blondie caused so much property damage, she became headline news. Authorities had no choice. They issued a shoot to kill permit. I never ever saw that bear for the entire rest of the year. And it was just uh, an incredible thing that the bear just disappeared off the map, never seen again. Mono one, Wallace one, 97. Now it looks like another bear with a cub is picking up where Blondie left off. Same patterns, same locations. Uh, woman's home alone. 10 for a copy. A half mile from the last break in, the sow and cub are trying to get into another home. This time, the house is occupied. <laughs> Hello? Are you all right, ma'am? Where are they at? There's nothing out here. No, ma'am. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. All it's right. You can get through a window out there. All right. Bears should not be pulling on anybody's window, uh, especially an occupied home. I take it very seriously in order to get a bear shot. I wish I got here sooner, and uh, I would have dealt with it right then. And um, we're just a few minutes behind the call. It was on the ground, and it was facing you, and it was biting on your window. And the baby was right in between all those little trees there. All right, thank you very, very much. Mono one, wildlife one. I'm going to um, be 98 from the call, report taken. Uh, the bears are UTL, but I'll be tr patrolling the area for the next hour or so. Within a half hour, Steve gets the tip he's been hoping for. We had a call from one of my uh, neighbors out here and let us know that the sow and cub was lurking around again. And if I can catch her red-handed, it'd be just great. Straight up this way? Yeah, right up the hill. I think we're hot on her trail, and again, no offense to her, but uh, she has been acting up a little bit, and done correctly, aversive conditioning can change her habits for life. Copy, so. There you go. Steve stays a short distance away from the bears, hoping to catch them attempting another break-in. But then... <laughs> neighborhood dogs frighten the bears. The sow runs one way, the cub heads up the nearest tree. With the sow and cub separated, Steve shifts his efforts from punishing the bear to reuniting her with her cub. We got three dogs on the bear right now. We got a baby cub right here at 10 feet. She can't leave the cub here. Uh, you guys could keep your dogs with you. Yeah, yeah she's oh, just good. right behind us, a little okay. eight pounder. Yeah. We have to hook them back up. She can hear you. She's on her way. Here she comes. All right, all right. Hurry up. It's all right. Come get that cub. Go ahead. Call her down. You're all right. Go home. Go on. Go home. Go home. Go home. Let's go. Good dogs. Go home. Go on. Go on. Get. We almost had it down and uh, reunite these guys. Those dogs just got loose again, which kind of irks me. But um, good dogs just, uh, you know, charging after the bear, and that's what dogs do. Thank 
poco. Finally, after 40 minutes. Here she comes. Mother of the South Town. Here's the baby coming down. There you go. Come on. You're all right. You're okay. You're all right. The sow and cub reached the ground, but there's still a lesson to be learned. She was walking away at a slow speed instead of running away. Bears need to learn to be afraid of people. That's my job sometimes, is to professionally be mean to bears. Get out of here. Go on, get. Steve shoots at the sow, not the cub. Go on. Get out of here. Go on. I lit her up and uh, gave her a, a rubber ball on the ass. 101, wildlife one. I just fired two different rounds on this sow out on uh, Woodman Street. Uh, we're code four. Uh, just FYI, to get somebody calling in. They are non-lethal uh, rubber rounds, light fields, and um, they're, uh, they work just great. It's a soft rubber, and um, just reach out and tap her and let her know she's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Don't be walking around midday checking windows. We'll treat you like any other perpetrator in our town. Steve measures his success with the bears by their actions. 24 hours after shooting rubber bullets at the sow and cub, they're staying away from homes and eating their natural food in the forest. It looks like the aversive conditioning is working. Wow, I mean, this is what it's all about uh, when we get them to practice more of this behavior and less human action uh, behavior. My job is uh, the, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. In the quiet of the forest, Steve gets his first close-up look at the sow. These young bears are difficult to identify sometimes with them shedding out and changing colors. This one's a two-tone bear, a little bit unusual. It's three and a half year old female. She came out of hibernation with two cubs. One died right away early in the spring, and then she was left with one cub. She entered at least three different homes while she had her cub. One of the really odd things is that the homes are all being vandalized in the daytime. Steve begins to piece together everything he knows about this bear. It all seems eerily familiar. The size makes sense. Her age makes sense. Every single thing indicates that it's the bear who entered all the homes. Last year, Wandy. That she could be alive and wreak havoc, that just gave me shivers up my spine. Dark head, dark legs, blonde uh, straps and back, blonde highlights. That hasn't changed much other than the blonde continues to darken, but uh, those same basic color patterns, same age, same sex, same homes that are being broken into. Blondie never went in a single home at night. She only went in homes in the daytime, which made it even more offensive. When Blondie first appeared, she was an orphan cub who had to learn how to survive on her own. Bear's been staying out of trouble. We did enter this home last week through an open window. It's just terrible for a bear to learn those lessons. Um, this bear is going to grow up to be a big, huge bear. And uh, if we don't train him correctly from the start, then uh, we get what we deserve. I'm sorry, buddy. You're doing good, huh? The bear just got in the habit of going into houses that were open, all soft entries, open sliding glass doors, open windows, and it would go straight to the fridge, right past the trash can, and uh, help itself to uh, ice cream or fine cheeses. Guava was a favorite. 
People weren't afraid of it. Uh, they didn't report uh, what she was doing, and uh, they would just shoo her out of the house. Go on, you cute bear, and keep the cookies. And so it went unchecked and unreported dozens of times. What are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. You bad bear. No more. It was just a really, really bad example of loving on bears too much. People just went out of their way to protect her. The bear came out of den last year and proceeded to enter homes. Again, they were all soft entries in a half a square mile, 51 times it entered homes. Go on, get out of here! I just could not put a stop to it. Uh, rubber bullets, flashbang, pyrotechnics, the food reward, and the people doting over that bear outweighed me being mean to the bear. The bears left the area. But there was another issue hampering Steve's efforts to teach Blondie. Mammoth Lakes borders federal forest land. Steve's area of responsibility is within the four square miles of our town, where Steve can use all of his techniques and efforts to dissuade bears and try and change their behavior patterns. When Blondie raided homes outside Steve's jurisdiction, he was powerless to stop the behavior. Really, it was quite evident that Blondie was going to push the envelope until somebody had to shoot her. A shoot-to-kill permit was issued for Blondie. But then, as if the bear could sense it, Blondie disappeared, and the shoot-to-kill permit expired. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, trying to locate her or her carcass, and uh, was unsuccessful. It was really odd, but the bear never showed up again. Until now. And though she's broken into three cabins, Steve doesn't punish her. For the moment, she's not breaking any of the rules. We reward our bears by silence and privacy for doing the right thing. It looks like she wants to um, suckle and uh, feed her cub. And so we're just about to back out of here and uh, we'll leave her alone. But she's being a good bear and it's great to see. For three days, there are no reports of Blondie and her cub. Marty, a copy, Wallace one. I left one, one, one. I was on patrol in the car in front of me. It came to an abrupt stop, so I stopped to see what the problem was. You could tell he was rattled. I walked up to the car. He wouldn't even roll the window down at first. Then he cracked it and told me that a car coming the opposite way up towards Lake Mary had just missed the mom bear and hit a cub right in front of him. Marty, how long have you been here? Just about five minutes. I, I just missed it. Uh-huh. Uh, the little cub got rolled behind its mom. The mom is presumably on scene. It was dragging the bear off the road. And uh, not good at all, but we'll see if we can help a little bit. I can hear the sow and hear the cub. She's absolutely on scene, Marty. You got lethal on you? Yes. Yeah. The bear was moving like 20 feet each way. You can hear it go down a little bit, come up the hill a little bit. You know, it was moving around like it was pacing back and forth, you know? Sounds like about where that pine is right there. That's what I'm thinking too, Marty. You're right on top of it. We got out spotlights and started looking right off the roadway for the bear. It was right within five feet of us. She's yeah, down to my left now. Right here, Marty. Oh. That's your sow. All right, good girl. All right, she's got it. Hello, good bear. The cub, she's looking to her right. The cub's to her right. Hello, good girl. Oh, Is she coming towards us or she going down? No, she's probably trying to revive him. OK, OK. This is a really steep slope right here. Watch yourself now. Watch yourself. OK. F me. Where we can't work through this brush, that bear can come through here faster than the fastest human on Earth. You need to be careful when you're dealing with the uh, injured bear. Uh, the cub is, you know, is all right.
Uh oh. 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 I don't hear the cub. I'm guessing it's 11:44. Oh. Oh boy. Son of a bitch. The cub died while we were there, and we could hear its vocalization stop. sound like that before. I can't say what she's thinking. I could only hear her wailing in grief. Oh, girl. Oh, I wish I could help the thing more. You have a really, really anxious sow that's just lost her young. And for the safety of everyone involved, we're going to lay back off this scene. I share in her grief. I've seen it go on for, you know, filming guys I didn't sleep at all and the thoughts that went through my mind and the images I replayed it a few times last night I have personal experience of people losing their children it will ruin the rest of your life all of this has been trampled down, and uh, obviously uh, the bear went through here. 51% of all black bears die before they're 18 months old. It is something that bears have to deal with all the time. I don't see any blood or hair or the body of the young bear, and uh, kind of happy for that. Uh, she must have dealt with it in her own way. and. Um, We won't have to do any body recovery today. I see some of the most beautiful things, you know, that anyone could ever imagine. And I also see some of the most horrendous, and it can happen an hour apart. You know, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and some days suck. Blondie disappears. Steve is now monitoring the big bears who have come into town and taken over the prime feeding areas. Like the bear who's made a local golf course his home. Steve calls him Half Bib. Well, we call him that because of the big blaze on his chest. It looks like a bib. Uh, it comes out about this time every evening and uh, enjoys the cool grass. I'll uh, have a poop and a pee and a little bit of food and water. He's a no harm, no foul bear. He's never caused any problems in Mammoth. I can't document a single 911 call that we were on with that bear. You can set your clock by his habits, and his habits are all good habits. And uh, we'll give him all the room he needs. In the summer, um, he does try to hold space in some of the most prime habitat. And uh, in this case, he can hold his own um, in the golf course and makes a good living there on the grass, the flowers, uh, the wasps, the insects, the larvae. It's just a, a really rich place for food. He 
not so nervous around people, but other bears, and so his nose is constantly working, uh, making sure that there's not other male dominant bears in the area. Tonight there's not, and so he's got the place to himself. Humpy guy, humpy guy. He isn't uh, habituated, but does he know the ways of man, the traffic patterns, what time the bars close? Uh, he sure does. And uh, he's uh, a great example of the bears that we want to keep alive in Mammoth. But not all bears play by the rules of Mammoth Lakes. There's a bear in a cabin up at Twin Lakes, uh, cabin number four. Here's the entry spot. And the bear went in and out a couple of times. And then just before you got here, headed up the back trail. It's kind of ripped the side off and looks like it hopped on the bed and went in. Bear was in here for a while. Can you see the blonde colored hair? Could you describe them for me? It's not a big, big, super mature looking bear to me, but it's not a little guy either. She has some pictures here, Steve. You could, you could scroll through. Oh, no. This is Blondie. 44, 15, 44, 11. Three weeks after Blondie's cub was killed by a car, the bear is out of control. He came right to our window. Raiding multiple houses daily. I looked up. And there it was, by that big tree, just looking at just the cabin. Like I said, there you, he huh? is. And, and we know that bear. It's that young bear that the baby was killed. After her cub was killed, she had more free time and uh, started a new rash of burglaries. A cub in tow is a restraint. Uh, she doesn't have that restraint anymore. Blondie's now able to travel faster and farther. She moves outside of town back to land controlled by the federal government, the same area where she caused so much damage a year before. Steve is powerless to do anything. It's beyond his jurisdiction. I was ordered to stand down in those areas with any type of tool that I might use on a bear. Copy that, we'll be documenting, I guess. A letter was served to the city council, the police department, and to myself stating that I was not welcome to work with bears, uh, lethal or non-lethal, anywhere in those tracks of cabins. But Steve isn't prohibited from being there, and he wants to monitor the situation. Look at every one of these has got bear prints all over them from the same bear trying to push it in. This is the fifth one on the block I know of. Not cool. Six more cabins are broken into. The owner of the lodge at Twin Lakes, he's had uh, eight or nine entries with dogs in the house, with people in the house. This is uh, happening, you know, every day now. The scene is so typical, you know, cupboards opened, refrigerator opened, all the, the good sweet food gone. I think we're up to 17 or 18 cabins now up in the Lakes Basin and probably uh, three quarters of a square mile. They get pretty aggressive and pretty confident once they succeed. It was not easy to uh, shoo it away. And usually, I can shoo them. And now, I just feel we're all in jeopardy. We love the bears, and um, we hate to see anything bad happen to them. But my view is, you do everything you can, and if there's nothing else you can do, then sometimes you have to get rid of it. What it did to our community, what it did to me, what it did to the reputation of the town, it was all just shattering. People were just horrified both ways. The people that wanted the bear killed, the people that didn't want the bear killed, the people that are in the middle of the road, the politicians. It was just absolutely insane. Bear comes up, pulls off the shutters, breaks in windows, breaks in doors, throws things everywhere. Don't be discouraged from picking up the phone. And... Yeah, but your police cannot do anything no. to get rid of the bear. If the bear breaks into that cabin and I'm in there and I shoot that bear, what happens? Do I have that right to actually use a firearm in my home? It's probably too late to save her now, and something needs to be worked out because we're here leaving our cabins up there vulnerable to that bear still. We have done everything 
that we know. And still, right now, we have a rogue bear. Could the bear bowl somebody over, escaping from a residence? Um, that part was very, very possible. As hard as it is, I needed to admit defeat with that bear. To destroy a bear, law enforcement needs what's called a depredation permit. We had a summer home owner get a depredation permit from the California Department of Fish and Game, which is a process that allows a homeowner to either remove themselves or contract with someone to remove a nuisance animal. She usually um, went in places that weren't occupied and that were shuttered up, and she would just tear the shutters off, push in the windows. And that's what made her such a dangerous bear because there was no protection. I mean, if you can't, if your shuttered cabin doesn't protect you from a bear, then you have no defense. Steve wants to be the one to take the shot. I have gone public asking permission uh, to take the life of this young bear. I have a, a huge connection with this particular bear. Uh, I've spent countless hours uh, dealing with this. If you're not prepared to remove a certain bear out of the population, then you shouldn't be in this line of work. But the permit is for property outside of Mammoth City limits. That bear is in a jurisdictional mess and is on the other side of an imaginary line that the Forest Service owns that property and it's not within the four square miles of town proper, then I'm not allowed to do my work. And um, boy, am I pissed off. By law, the destruction of the bear falls to federal government trappers who will capture and euthanize her. Relocation is against California fish and game policy. We have multiple tools at our disposal that we can use in order to capture a wild bear. We have culvert traps or large cage traps that will put some type of a bait inside, usually a, a, a food source that bears are accustomed to. And when the bear crawls into the culvert, and grabs that bait, it releases the, the doors and they slam shut, and then they lock, and then that bear is trapped inside the culvert trap. And, uh, you know, typically they're euthanized with a firearm. Bears being shot in the head in live traps bothers me, and especially when it could be prevented. Whatever happens, we should be responsible for ourselves and for our bears. Well, that's why it says don't feed our bears instead of don't feed the bears, because they're not somebody else's bears. They're our bears, and you ought to be responsible for them, good or bad. That night, the traps are set. Blondie never shows. A bear is not a nocturnal bear. It only does daytime burglaries. As every day passes, destroying her becomes a hotter issue for the community that loves its bears. It's not black and white. There is no books written about this or laws written about this. It's to good judgment. We're all here to serve the public. And what would the public want? What would mom and dad and the normal, everyday people that aren't on scene, what would they be saying to do? Shoot. Shoot. Steve can't do anything to save Blondie. The most he can do is help find her and make sure authorities get the right bear. When I pulled in there, I could see that one of the cabins that was broken into last week, that the windows had been repaired. Uh, all the shutters had been torn off, the screens had torn off, the window was covered with her prints. David 1, Wildlife 1. Wildlife 1, 44 Yeah, it's breaking into another cabin now. I'm just going to confirm with you. We got the go-ahead. We're good to go. Okay. Yes. OK. We have the piece of paper. The folks who own the summer homes up here, their personal safety is my responsibility. I have to do the right thing by them. And that meant um, that this bear needed to be killed. 
Blondie has become a public safety hazard. The bear continues her rampage, but it's daytime and the feds aren't present. Now it falls to the Mammoth Lakes Police Department to destroy her. I just need to know where he is. Steve. I'm behind the Olsen cabin. We're probably 300 yards up from where my truck is. The more of us that are moving through here, the more noise we're gonna make. So you everybody just kind of slow down and be conscious of that. My thoughts were um, to make it clean, uh, to make it safe, and to just get the problem solved. The bear was probably full from eating and was laying down at the base of a tree. I stayed eyes on the bear. Uh, they got locked and loaded. We're okay, take your time. Take your time, Karen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Shot, yes? Yeah. yeah. Go. Yeah, everybody stand down. Okay, I need to talk to you. Sure. Sorry that we'd gotten to the point with this animal. It's just, we have such a unique environment up here. We certainly as human beings have a responsibility in that and that we allowed the animals to get to the point where they started to look for human food instead of their own. I got a vested interest in it. My cabin's been broken into three times in the last three weeks. Okay. I, I, yes, I understand Did that. Did you get him? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. And she's actually a she. And yes, sir. Is that the one? That's the one. We're really happy that uh, the authorities came here and took care of this guy. It's too bad, but it's it's tough. You know, they can be smart about those. Yeah. Um, or she might have. California Department of Fish and Game wildlife biologists will take the carcass. They're responsible for disposing of the body. For the time being, I've taken possession of the bear. Maybe uh, collect our thoughts uh, before we turn the bear over to be put in the landfill. None of this had to happen this way. It's. Uh, I'm not a religious man, but I think I'm a spiritual man, and um, the Native Americans taught me to follow their lead and make an offering to this guy, help this guy along a little bit best we can.
Mono One, Wildlife One. Wildlife One. Can you show me 98 from the Lakes Basin? No, I'm fine.